have you stopped dancing? No, stopped dancing. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It's Monday. <laughs> and like any good rock and roll band, we've got a new lineup this week. <laughs> Yet again. <laughs> Yet again. Um, nothing to do with gonna... rehab or anything like that. <laughs> You're going to have to put a, uh, a new new titles up with my name on, I think, aren't you? This oh, point. It's, yeah. it's getting that way. <laughs> Um, anyway, thank you, everybody. Welcome to episode 28, series three of the Plastic Crack podcast. Um, as I mentioned, you we're, we're a few men, well, a few, a few men down and one man up this weekend, uh, this week, weekend, week. I think we've got a net benefit, actually, myself. We have, yes. <laughs> so, um, Martin is on holiday. Um, Ken has been called away into work. So, good friend of the Plastic, pra- Plastic Crack podcast, Alex from Storm of Steel Wargaming, has kindly agree to sit in um and join us for tonight's festivities alex how are you i'm very good thank you uh i didn't realize i was going to be here for two hours until about 15 minutes ago so that's great cheers lads right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did try to open to everybody who wants to join to come on and talk about painting tips and everything yes. else um we had the great response from two people um and <laughs> one being your good self um so if, obviously if anybody else does want to join and come and talk about painting tips please just email the plastic crack podcast email address i did put it wrong initially on the uh, facebook page and we'll be happy to invite you into the stream and um you can show the world your tips so to speak we will i'm gonna <coughs> say i am I am a bit of a media whore. That's why I jumped on it straight away. So, <laughs> you are, if, any, true. If, if anybody else in the, if anyone's in the chat's thinking the same thing, that you, you're right. <laughs> it's, the, it's the place to be in a Monday night, and why not? Like, like Dom said, though. Um, if you want to, you know, pop on to the the stream tonight and regale us with some painting tips, uh, you don't need any special software like that. Um, just click on the link, and we can admit you to the uh, to the, the the stream. And um, yeah, so what I thought I'd do is another painting clinic because i like talking about painting and it's my show tonight so that's why we're doing it um but it was i'll be honest it was dom's cracking idea to to invite um a few get you for you guys on so yeah it, 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 mainly dom, because it, if it was just my painting tips it wouldn't take very long it's like get <laughs> to paint, slap it on figure oh. show it up. that's how you do it right. so yeah so the, the, the email just in the chat is in the Facebook group. Uh, Dom, Dom, have you got the, the, the email thing open? I have. Brilliant. I have so indeed. My, my dutiful assistant here tonight will uh, will be the the, 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 the the gatekeeper, as it were. <laughs> that sounds terrible. That really does. Doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. You don't <laughs> have to come on for all two hours, by the way, anybody. No, no, no. no, <laughs> if no. You don't want to oh, wait, that. I That's can go. Fine. Yeah, yeah, you can go. All right, Brilliant. bye. <laughs> yeah, Alex. <laughs> um, Ken's we can't shout afford you, Alex. You're too expensive these days. <laughs> too famous. That's the problem. Uh, as, as Ken's not here, I'll, I'll get out of the way if you can't shout at me. Big thank you to everyone that's watching on the catch-up. We do appreciate it. Um, so, let's do, do, do Oh, my God, look. That's Martin. Can't hear it was a Haven Entertainment evening. Can't hear anything. I assume it's just a normal mix of rambling nonsense. Just go back to your drink. Go back to your drink. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's before we proceed into um into the podcast, let's have a look to see who's here. I think Rich M was the first, the first. I didn't take a screenshot because there was insanely busy in work today so i didn't get a chance to do that but rich m was the first in so congratulations rich there we go there we go i caught it ah, <laughs> good work good work very fast on those fingers there rich well done we don't we don't give out prizes for, for such tomfoolery which is a shame really <laughs> because it's it's seen as a, a sort of rite of passage really isn't it right let's see who we've got in tonight before we move on so uh, Rogers Company, Mercenary Miniatures, uh, Ham and Jam, Philip Hyerman, Basement 1908, Host Steve, Red Steph, Lionheart, Enemy in Sight, Paul's Paint Shed, Hello Paul, Andrew GF, Carl Burks, Lazy Pirate Painting, Steve Harbour, uh, me, uh, Carazette, uh, Pat Neal, uh, Bicker City, Hello Don, uh, Seagulls and Spurs, Hello James, Mozart, Jonas is here, uh, Friends of General Haig, Louis Baby, John City, York's Dragoon, um, Hello from a very humid Glastonbury, I can well imagine. <clears throat> a bit weak, bit bit late for that rave, aren't you? I thought that <laughs> he's in a field somewhere on his own, just uh, running himself in mud. 
<laughs> Ian's here. Morgan Hostel, evening all. That week went fast. Not for me, it didn't. I was I was delirious for most of it. I really wasn't very well. <laughs> to tell you about, I had a dream that I was living in a tree. It was just awful. Just... <laughs> Did it have a big um, tuft on it or anything? No. It was a, a big, a big hollowed out tree, and I was living in, in this. It was, <laughs> it was, mo- it's it was that mo- weird beer you drink, mate. That's what not, it is. I don't know what it was. You the, the, was the odd foulness that struck me down last week. Um, CC Audi, um, <clears throat> David Tuck, Daniel Justin, uh, do, 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 Simon's here, uh, John Salby. Good evening. Hello, uh, evening from Miami. Uh, Matt Wright, are you trying to create a PCP version of a Stooges gig? I think that'd be a bit more rock and roll than what we're sure what we're putting yeah, out tonight. Yeah, that would be an upgrade, <laughs> frankly. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was just a, they know you too well, Stu. They know me too well. It was just a regular tree. But it, <clears throat> I woke up and I was like, why am I dreaming about trees? This is just awful. This is just <laughs> awful. Um, Shrink 7, Simon Weinberger, uh, Slapshot 2K. Hello from Kent, Washington. Sean Clark, A up now, our lad. So I think we've got a, so a, a, fellow, <laughs> a fellow northerner in with us tonight. Uh, stuff, Nick Games, Marky Sparky, Battlebunk HQ. Hello, Lee, old school FRP. Uh, Peter playing with Led Brian. That's a new one on me. Uh, Robin's here. Um, let's have a look. Alex, your new name is apparently Beardy Ken. Beardy Ken. <laughs> right. Beardy Ken. Mm-hmm. Right, I'm not, not very happy about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying but, it now, saying it now before it get before it gets any traction. Yeah, put, put, put the blue wicket away, mate. I do that that way. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's have a look. Rich um, Benjamin's here, Scale Model Inc. Hello, Corey. Um, Gary Phillips, uh, Bad Beagle, Daniel Moreno. Um, Cheers, Steve. Good to be back. I did miss it last week. I, I was I was going to come on, but it would have been like an episode of Tales from the Tales from the Crypt or something. It wouldn't have been very pleasant for anyone concerned. Um, <laughs> apparently, Martin's been spotted. He has to dash. Enjoy. I'll see you, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gary Clark. How do greetings from Sheffield? The, the dude. We got um, Leslie's here. Uh, Leslie. Sam Gertz. Um, Mini Warmups. Hello from Grand Canyon State. Uh, yeah, it could have been worse. Could have been doing about Ken's fiddle yard. Oh <laughs> God, I'm limey. I, I think I'd, I think I'd still be. I, I wouldn't have fully recovered yet. No, no, no. Um, Brushworks. Uh, happy York today from David Tuck. Do, do, yes, do. indeed. York today, isn't it? Yeah. It yeah. Is. yeah. Happy York. <laughs> two, two, Paul. <laughs> two, two northern lads and a spoken southerner. <laughs> because it's Yorkshire Day. Why, what what else would you have? You know. That's why we're doing it this way. Yeah. Yeah. I this went to been... university in Leeds, so I, that you know, at least I've got you, a, a modicum. At least I know where Yorkshire is. Put it that you, way. You're, you're honorary then, at least. Yeah, it's a southerner. <laughs> And you um, finally, <clears throat> I know I didn't want to because I couldn't get a job, mate. It was lovely, no. and finally, Ricky Turner. So, hello, everybody, again. Thanks for joining us tonight. We're going to be talking about all things PCP painting clinics. So we're going to be drilling into people's brains, not you know, not not, <laughs> not physically, but metaphorically, uh, for some painting tips. So <laughs> If you want speed painting, you've got Dom. If you've got you want fifteen mil, you got Alex. And like like Dom said, check out the uh, the PCP email address if you want to join us um, to dispense with your painting tips. Uh, we can send you a link and get you on the stream for a short while if you want to. Um, if you're too shy, just put it in the comments. But oh, pop in the comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's lovely over any, here. The water's lovely. <laughs> Dive in. If you've got any any comments or questions about painting that you want answering um, about French drummers, don't come to me because I'll just, tell you to, <laughs> I'll just tell you to stop and burn them straight away because they're useless. Um, but yeah, a- any questions about painting, modeling, basing, cork, uh, cork especially. I'll talk about cork on that. If you want. Uh, just get them in the chat, and we will answer those later on. One question I'd love to pose the uh, the audience so far is um, for them to think about is the new contrast paints. What's people's opinions on? Oh yes, because I have been playing with a little bit, but I haven't played that much, and I'm intrigued by them already. So I'd like to know what people think. I saw, I know, I saw um, Stuart from Realms. Yeah, he's yeah. done a video. 
Mm. As, um, are they are they brand new? Are they is it a new range range of them? A new range brought... of them. Um, and are they done twenty some... odd colors, something like that? Oh, okay. so they done, have they done anything to them? Or are they just the same? Well, this is the ongoing debate: is that whether or not they are um, thicker and or mm. more saturated than the previous ones. Right. Uh, the couple I have tried definitely seem to be a lot thicker, um, not as contrasty as the original ones were. Okay. Um, still quite nice to paint with. I mean, they go on really nicely, but they're much more. They appear anyway to be much denser as a color and um, much more of a one coat. Right. Okay. I'll be That's honest, I, I've never used Well, I've got them, but I've I've never used them for the purpose that they're meant to be used for. I, mean, I use, I use uh, Gillum and Flesh mm -hmm. as a sort of um, a wash for, for Flesh, basically. And um, the, the other ones I've not really used. I just don't, I don't know. Maybe it's because they're the best over a white or gray undercoat, and I, I never... I never undercoat in white or grey, so there wouldn't be much use to him. No, similar um, to you, Steve. Uh, I've got them, but I've never used them. Yeah, <laughs> I've just I've yeah, got that, right. I've used them once, I think, on some Star Wars figures a long time. That ago. was exactly why I bought them. Was for painting storm. Them. Yeah, painting stormtroopers. Yeah. Um, you liar, Ken. <laughs> liar. <laughs> liar. Don't believe you. Ken's a massive fan of contrast. I'd love to get Ken's input onto this new range. I bet he could, I bet he could wax lyrical for hours about them. I bet he really. It, this podcast is now sponsored by him, you know. Medium, yeah, I have to say, I say I've only just played a couple of, with a couple of them so far. I haven't done a full analysis. Mm. I will. Anyway, sorry. I think <clears throat> I think they they are like like like, um, like Lee said, they're just another tool for the toolbox. I mean, if you yeah. can make use of them in, in any way yeah. that you can, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. knock yourself out. But the, oh, the completely. Just, well, not you, you know, <laughs> if it if it helps somebody start off painting, if it helps them, you know, go down the 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 line of, of painting with other techniques, and you know, all, all power to them as far as I'm mm. concerned. Let them do it. You know, it doesn't matter, does it? Uh, they just, it's, yeah, it's not something I'm particularly interested in because I've got my techniques of painting. But, you know, there'll be somebody who's never painted before. So yeah, they're going to look a lot better than uh, probably some of my very early uh, efforts. So, yeah, yeah. it's a good start off. Yeah, I, think, I, mean, I think they're good. I mean, I use them a lot <clears> for my, my painting. <throat> um, but just the, these new ones just seem different. They're not quite yeah. the same. And, um, you know, not different in a bad way. But yeah. just, I'm going to have to try and work out exactly how to use them because mm -hmm. they're not. They appear it's, to be certainly the three or four of you so far appear to be very different. Yeah, I think my main problem with them, like most of Games Workshop paints, is I just can't understand what the names are. No, well, that's <laughs> true. You know what I mean? When I'm looking for German field grey, I want it to be called German field grey. Like, I don't know, you know, goblin <laughs> snot or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> Which green is it? <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely I'm sure they. I'm sure they've got like a fifty man department that sits there twenty four hours. Just <laughs> paint names. They're obviously <laughs> drinking the stuff you drink, Steve, and, and yeah, then coming be. up with these wonderful ideas. God, what a dream job! What What's that? Come up with some mad names and drink mad beers. What <laughs> <out here. laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say no to that. Um, really if they need that over that department overhaul, just give me a shout. I'm sure I can, <laughs> I can, point, I can point them in the right direction. You heard oh, it here first. There we go. <laughs> right, He's apply for a job with GW just on the stream. I love it. <laughs> um, so, but let's, before we get back into the, the the contrast and all things painting chat, um, Dom, what have you been up to? Oh, uh, oh, what have I been up to? Uh, I've, done a, I've done a bit. Um, I've worked away at a couple of projects, so I continued down the O Group uh, area. So finished off some oh, uh, Animags oh, nice. tracks. Um, they're going to go in my uh, late war, obviously. Um, what division so, are those, Dom? What's the? You know uh, what, mate? It's whatever sticker I had left over in the pack. <laughs> <laughs> the division they're in. Very you don't be asking details like that. I don't know. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think I'm it was the, actually in all seriousness, I think it was a third Panzer, but right. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, so very I did great. them, and then uh, blah blah. blah. I, I've 
I realized when I was using my Russian Napoleonic 28 mils that I didn't have enough uh, guns to make. So in the black powder, they, they have large batteries. Um, and I only had, and that's three models rather than two. And I'd done mine, there was two. So I just finished off another one just to make Ooh, sure nice. I had the third so that it fits in with the, the battery like that. Oh, so lovely. The three that of them all great. Lined very, up, very which nice. is good. Quite pleased with that. Oh, really nice. Really and nice. then I can only think I must have caught far too much sun or heat or something else because <clears throat> I did this. <laughs> I mean, apart from that, he looks like he's got a blue eye. Um, yeah. <laughs> it, it, that's, Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, I've seen the original of that painting. Uh, it's in uh, it's in Vienna. Is it in Vienna? The, it's uh, Marengo, isn't uh, it? Is this from Battle of Marengo? Uh, is it? It's, I thought it's, it's in Crossing the Alps, isn't it? Oh, it's By the David. Alps. Yes, you're quite right. Yes, yes, yes you're quite right. Uh, it's, it's incredible. It's massive. The painting itself is massive. That's a really it's a, a lovely depiction of it. There it's uh, yeah. foundry uh, foundry miniatures. Yeah, uh, I thought it model. was. So yeah. I, I I wanted I needed a needed somebody to shoot in the ninety fifth, so I picked that one up. Um, and then mm. just this morning, I finished off Lovell's retinue of Bo and Bill for me. Uh, yes. War of the Roses project. So yeah, nice. just quite pleased with that. Although I've just noticed I, when I put the photograph, I looked at those uh, yellow helmets I've done, and I thought they would look like firemen after I'd done it. Anyway, <laughs> not too fine. <laughs> I watched, uh, I, watched you, I watched your uh, your old group progress video last week. Tell you what, you flew through those Germans, mate. You just absolutely mm. flew through them. You did, yeah, um, yeah. The, um, the Germans are really... I, I found them just so easy. All those old group stuff has been so easy to paint. It's been an absolute joy. Oh, um, we, I'm trying we, to ration myself on them. We've got another one. <laughs> you know, damn <laughs> Excellent. Good stuff, good stuff. Work, yeah. yeah. So plug work. for next week. We've Ooh, got yes. Dan, uh, David Brown, mm. rule writer for O Group and General Darme and many, many other rule systems on the Can stream. Can I come on that stream? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll substitute you in for Ken because he does. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, yeah, me too. Yeah, he's, I just wanna, he's a nice guy, I Dave. Want, I just want to pick your brains about O Group so much because just like, yeah. Oh, yeah. And okay, again, we... when I say pick his brains, I don't mean physically pick his brains. I just mean completely <laughs> wrong. <laughs> just, just put, his, uh, put his disclaimer we out there. Like. him at salute, and he was uh, he was very positive about joining. So um, yeah, yeah, that's all good. Brilliant. Um, Lee likes your half tracks done. Thank you. Oh, can you come on the stream? That stream. Everyone go. wants to be on that stream, not this one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. No. I know. Um. Steve from Basement 1908 has been doing um, O Group in 28 mil on his yeah. huge, huge table. Huge table. I, wow. Well, that's his, his, his table is actually bigger than where I live. I think it's <laughs> bigger than most people live, to be absolutely honest. That table is enormous. Because he does, he did big Napoleonic black yes. powder games and then General Darme games. And it's like, oh my yeah. goodness. Oh <laughs> Makes my you goodness. sick, doesn't it? People having that much room. I love it. It's space Brilliant. to do things. <laughs> yeah, I've got, I think I've got the first time I saw some of his videos was during lockdown and he was doing some Zoom games with his buddies. And it was clearly mm. games that had gone on for quite a long time and there had obviously been quite a lot of alcohol imbibed because the games <laughs> got larrier and larrier as they went through the two hour mark. It was very, very funny. I, lo I did enjoy them immensely. <laughs> um, Alex, you got any pictures or are you unprepared? Or uh, Absolutely unprepared. Okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he was coming on, Steve. Give him a break. <laughs> uh, but I have. I can tell you what I've been doing. Uh, oh, I've got him here. But... <laughs> okay. uh, this is a Japanese machine gun bunker for uh, the Pacific. Uh, this is 15 mil. I just knocked this up. This is uh, this is inspired by um, Joe Bilton over on Twitter. Uh, he's Joe uh, underscore Wargamer. No, if you yes. don't follow Joe on, on Twitter, then you are missing out. He's the guy that did the, the fantastic chain of command scenery uh, for, um, for 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 Normandy. Unbelievable mm -hmm. stuff. He's now turned his attention to um, the Pacific and jungle stuff. So all of mine's gone in the bin because I can't compete <laughs> with it. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, yes, I've also been working on uh, – Stu as well over at Miniature Realms. He sent me the um, 3D printed – 
uh, you probably can't see that. There's not much point in holding it up. 15 mil US Marine Corps. Uh, oh, nice. So because uh, Tav Travis over at Tabletop CP did this side pan, uh, pint size campaign for chain of command. I'm basing, basing them on those, so I'm working right. my way through them. So that's the first. I've done the first squad of 13. I'm on, yeah. on to working on the second one now and uh, just doing bits and pieces, really. That's so it's kind of like jungle fever over here. Uh, yeah, that's that's probably been most of my work. Uh, well, last week I did some Panzer 3Js, I did some civilian vehicles, and there was something else as well, but I've completely forgotten. Whatever it was, you, you'll have it's seen the photos. Good, so I'll, I'll probably, yeah. Those, yeah, I'll those civi it. the civilian vehicles look really good. They um, they were really nice. Thanks. Yeah, they're all three D printed by Sabotaged. Uh, mm. He's got so much detail, uh, like the running boards and everything. They're a little bit cracked in places, but you just cover it up. It doesn't matter, you know. But fifteen. Million, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's nice uh, scatter terrain. That's all I'm using them for, and cover and things. Yeah. Does, he, that, does uh, he have all the designs for them, or does he? You know, do you have to send him the the STLs or what have you? Uh. I just asked him if he got them, and he said he's oh, got right. some, so he printed them for me. I don't know if he's cool. – I'm assuming he's got a license for them or he's getting them free from somewhere and messing about with them yeah. himself. But, yeah, he's basically – I'm paying him to print them, basically. Nice. As far hmm. as I'm aware. And he, he, he does some great uh, – I mean, Paul is, is a really nice bloke, and he will sort you out. If you're, if you're looking for anything weird and wonderful that you want printed, in, a bit of an advertisement for him because he's, he's sorted me out for the last few years now. Mm. He's well, he's well worth going to. I know um, Ken from Eccentric Man, he's got a, a few bits of um, 3D printed scenery from, from Sabotage. It looked yeah. really, really good yeah. as well. Mm. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah, really like, yeah, even stuff like like concrete um, telegraph poles and things like that. Just add them to mm. the table. Makes it look yeah. a million times better. You know. Well, I'm, going yeah, to, I'm, going to be on the, I'm going to be on the hunt soon for some um, 15 mil uh, scenery for when I complete yeah, my yeah. second overgroup army. So yeah, I got my, <laughs> I got my BDI up on a, a number of uh, different <laughs> different sites and um, and shops, but I should be yeah definitely come to that. I, well, I he's hate done, making scenery. I'd rather just buy it. He, he's done. He's done for me uh, a load of 50 mil farm scatter. So it's stuff mm. like uh, millstones and uh, ladders and barrels and sacks and stuff like that. And, it, you know, you just pay him 10, 15, 20 quid and he'll just do an absolute ton. You'll never use it in a lifetime. And it's all great stuff. There you go. Advertisement's over. No, that's that's good. We always like to hear about good, reliable supplies. That's good. Lads who do a good job for everybody. So good. There's a question for you, Alex. So there's builds you did about a month ago. They were gorgeous. Can you post their source on your page on, on Facebook? Uh, which one, Louis? The farm or the individual buildings? The, well, e either of them came from Sabotage. Just go to Paul and ask him for them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it, it, either either of, either if it was that, big, that farm that I did, the Ward Farm, or if it was those individual buildings. Um, he, I, yeah, I just asked Paul for it, and he did it all, all for me. Uh, James, cheers, mate. I may DM you uh, at some point about those. Brilliant, thank you. It's cool. Let's have a look who else we got. Um, uh, my painting has been, well, after last week, was very minimal. Um, <laughs> see what, what did I manage to finish? I fin Well, I managed to do two bits of basing to complete my, um, well, these chaps, my late war British. Very nice. Um, Lovely. Because... I've only got one one section in this this project that I'm doing, so I've been painting them in batches of two, but there was two finished that I just needed to do the bases for, and I hadn't, I hadn't been anywhere near my desk in days, and I thought, right, I've got to, I've got to do something, so I based them. Um, really, really chuffed with them. Um, my opinion on that good, kit, my, my opinion on that kit has definitely changed. When I first got it, I wasn't wasn't pleased with it. I was like, ah, oh, no. Nah. But once you start actually working with it and painting it, it's it's a lovely, lovely um, bit to, to work with. I know a couple of people have asked me to do a painting tutorial video about the uniform, and it's it's something that I'm going to do um, moving forward. Um, I know I know I said this weekend how to weather 
or how I wear the tanks. Um, I just spent the weekend playing video games, so I never got around <laughs> to. Uh, I, I wasn't. I wasn't hundred percent. I, I didn't want to make a video while I was still sort of under the weather. You, you can, no, no one wants to hear me coughing and spluttering into a microphone. So, uh, uh, later this wait. week. Yeah, so I'm going to be doing the, the weathering video, and also I will do a a, a small shoot video how I paint British it because it's dead easy. It really is dead simple, so it won't be in. Um... What are the Vallejo pronouns you use? I can't find. Burns Umber is uh... oh, it's worn off. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's I think it's it's nine seven oh dot nine four one burnt That's the that's the burnt I use. All oh, right. Cheapest I chips see. crap from uh, from local uh, <laughs> arts. If you're priming with it, I just just, just use that because it's 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 cheap as anything. Uh, just get it. I, got, I think I got this from the works. Yeah, from the works. All uh, right. Another cheap jack shop. Three yeah. pound each or two two for for a fiver. Way cheaper Is than the label. Stuff? Is that the stuff you used on your, your jungle uh, scenery? Yeah, yeah, doing? yeah, for, for yeah. undercoating, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, it's, a, it's a nice colour for it and yeah, a lot cheaper There's as well. so much effort having to hand brush it on. Just get a spray can. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do that as um, well. But <laughs> and on, on Friday, if you were looking in the Facebook group, I decided to put myself through, through two hours of purgatory uh, by, <laughs> by building six more of these skeletons. Insane, because insane. who doesn't want to uh to build some skeletons that are made of 10 pieces who doesn't i found it absolutely entertaining it was fantastic um but I, I was saying to dom before we came on i've had a i've had a bit of a mad idea um i'm gonna build all the skeletons that i need all the skeletons that i need um because the dead easy to paint so i need to sit down and build another 28 of them Jesus, mate. You're going to do it Can you do a reaction video? Day. One of those things you get on the internet with <laughs> people to, you know, going through something. I, I just oh. want to see you exploding every two seconds. Too. It, which, hilarious. it is annoying. It's a fiddly kit. Like I said, I don't know. What wants to put together, they look they look okay. They they mm -hmm. look fine. Um, building them is some kind of fresh hell that I'm not used to. Um <laughs> Because there's no instructions. You just got to sort of. Oh my god, that's even worse. No. I mean, uh, you you you're not really a military modeler, are you? Because I mean, I, I I came to war games through military modeling, so I'd I'd, I'd relish that kind of thing. Uh, and nice. I know a lot of war gamers don't like it. Do they? they don't like putting stuff together. I mean, I I really like it. I've been working on a one thirty fifth scale striker for uh -huh. four years. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Because <laughs> is that longer than it took to actually design them? <laughs> it probably was. Yeah. The, la the last time I worked on any of it was two. It was Good Friday two years ago. Um, <laughs> and all I all I did was swear just for the entire day. It was what, the, what stopped the, you? What, what was it? Just the little tiny fiddly bits. It's the the etch brass. Um, there's loads of it, and I was like, yeah. I mean, I, I like to think I'm quite dexterous when it comes to building stuff like that. No. Yeah. No, um, no, in this case, yeah, P uh, photo edged brass is, is a is a pain in the arse. I'll, I'll give you that, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I don't mind when it's just grills when you just, you just just pop it in, that's fine, but when you're gonna bend them and contort them into all different shapes and yeah, sod off, I'd rather have a plastic one, thank you very much. Um, and then when you watch somebody like night like night shift who just does it in his oh. sleep and and you're like how do you how what else this alchemy that you're doing here how how are you so good at everything he he, he makes everything about scale modeling just look easy it just it is, yeah and i watched with a couple of videos he was he was he was painting that french tank crew and he, he was really beating himself up about them. I was like, <laughs> oh, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, he's saying like, oh, yeah, Brilliant. this is terrible. It's like, that's, <laughs> that was, that'd be the best thing I'd ever done if I would produce that. <laughs> he's going, oh, this should go in the bin. <laughs> what? Just, how can you, if I, if, if I painted something like that, I'd be showing everyone, I'd be grabbing people in the street and saying, look at these, look at these I've painted. <laughs> Just, just so people knew that I'd painted them. 
absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> really, really, really unbelievable. Yeah. Um, but that was I, I had a low, a low output last week. Oh, I did paint. I, I did paint another um, platoon of uh, late war Germans, but I've not decided on the base yet. I don't, I don't want to really show them to anyone. Don't um, count on the base. Uh, yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm trying to do them. Because the late war Germans based around Normandy, I want to do a sort of bulkage themed basing um, for oh, them. Nice. Mm, yep. So for the the anti tank guns, I got I got some pack forties. Um, I want to put, put sort of bulkage on the bases, but I've not worked out how to do that yet. So I'm still in the uh, the planning stage for that. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so very low output for me this week. Hopefully, get a bit more done this week, and I will be doing those videos. So I will be doing a video about how I detail tanks. And then after that. Will be the showcase of the 11th armored project that i've been working on for months now um Brilliant. which is mainly just tanks because you know because <laughs> why not i just felt tanks like building cool. some tanks looking right. forward to seeing that uh, the, the weathering uh, uh, video actually it's, you know, it's be, it'll be interesting to see your process it, and what i'm going to do i'm going to be doing the stowage um because i love i love stowage mm -hmm. me and my mate are actually we're sort of like stowage weirdos if we find I a picture it that, that yeah, it. Oh, and it, we're always sending you the pictures of stowage. I'm a girl. What's your take next time? Oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's really good. Oh, what is it? Oh, just Sherman covered in boxes. All right, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> so we're always sending each other inspirational pictures of stowage. You know. there's, 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 there's not much to do around here, really, is there? <laughs> I've got a, got a stowage mood board on my Pinterest. <laughs> 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 so, uh, so that that's what I'll be doing. I mean, the one I actually finished. I did paint it the weekend. It's it's so fresh. There's I'm painting. It just hasn't been, it hasn't been it washed. There's no dry brush. And it's just a fresh mm. tank. Um, I will <laughs> warn people. Though people of a nervous disposition, there will be based tanks in the video. In the video. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I agree with yes. that, James. <laughs> so, um, yeah, just to to put. I will put a disclaimer and sort of, you know, some helplines at the end of it for people that aren't, aren't really down with facing the tank. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that at some point this week. Um, anyway, that's enough frivolity uh, around basing and um, tanks and stuff. Have we got, have we got, a, we got a special guest now, haven't we? There we go. We have indeed. Let me bring him in. Hey, oh, James. Hey, James. Good evening, James. Oh, we can't hear you, mate. This is going to get confusing. I've got YouTube open. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> you can hear it now. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah we can so hear you now. This is James from Shakos and Sprues, um, who I had the pleasure of running up. He ran a very, very awesome game of Blood and Plunder at the last CrapCon, um, which was just fantastic. And I believe he's running it again at CrapCon 3. Yeah, yeah, M Martin... Uh... Martin pulled my arm a bit. <laughs> he wanted to play it this time. <laughs> he wanted to play it last time, and uh, he didn't do did it because he always puts a big game on. Uh, but yeah, well, the series is not putting a big game on, I don't think. So uh, he may be all yours, James. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a, it's a re yes, it's just it's outrageous. I feel like a minority here. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, yeah, that'll, that'll be on that'll be on it. <laughs> Is it November, Crack Country or October? October. 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 Don't you start no, rumors about a November one as well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So Carl, Carl is I think he's in the chat. Uh, he's putting it on with me as well. Mm -hmm. so we, we, we bought which will be good because it I think the found from the last crack cons, um it's good to get a bit of time to go away from your own table so you can see other stuff. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so there'll be two of us, which will be good. No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks for having me on. No worries. Like I said, um, we thought we'd be deluge. I thought there'd be, there'd be people lining up. We were on about getting security and all kinds. Yeah, but, um, no. yeah, <laughs> no, it turns out we're not bigger than the friend. Rolling Stones after all. So uh, <laughs> yeah, close, close. close. Dream shattered in an instant. <laughs> um, so James, have you, have you have you used contrast paints? I have. I have. I have a little bit, and then I stopped you. <laughs> Uh, it was an interesting, uh, an interesting discovery. So, I, I, funny enough, it was when I started getting back into the hobby. I bought, uh, I bought some Warhammer, <laughs> some some white dudes. I can't remember what they were called. Tau, something like that. Uh, and I thought, oh, there's these contrast paints out, and I'd seen someone painting with them, 
Um, so I bought them. I bought a bunch of them, tried them out. <laughs> when well, these are rubbish for white, uh, but I liked one or two of the others. And then I didn't use them for ages. Uh, and then I used them a bit on the Napoleonics. So for, for horses, um, but I, I don't know. They're, they're quick, but I uh, I prefer the look you get when you use like the old triad style of like three different ballet or mm. colors. It 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 takes longer, <laughs> um, and there's nothing wrong with the contrast ones, but I just don't think they look quite as good. Well, didn't didn't Ken paint his entire Napo French Napoleon using contrasts? He did, yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, and it, I, I think it works pretty really well, but like uh, like you guys say, it's 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 not for everybody, and it it's not, it's certainly not perfect, that's for sure. But um, it is quick. If you want to yeah, I think there's a lot of it coming down to. I was just going to say, there's a lot of it come down to to what you're priming them with, what colours you're priming. With. Definitely, it's, it's got to be a light it's prime. If yeah. it's if it's if it's anything darker than a light grey, mm. it's going to struggle. Really, going to yeah. struggle to to, to you know, do you know what it should do. Found, right? Was um, I think because I was too tempted just to splodge it on, mm. <laughs> was that <laughs> I spent as much time fixing it as I would just painting in my normal style. Uh, but that said, I use them all the time for hair because it's like one coat and done. And mm. like any Napoleonic backpacks, like French backpacks, Prussian backpacks, the Gorgunter is it Gorgunter fur? Yeah, that's a great color. Um, it's almost that like a red works head. amazing as like a one coat backpack. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Very good on French backpacks. Give me that. Mm. I know when they when they first came out, I remember they were the, the big thing was you could paint a squad of space marines in in, in half an hour. And I, I mean they, they looked okay, but for me it was the like, like James just said, you, the one of the videos I watched, the, the guy went back and he was doing a lot of touching up or stopping from pooling or moving it across and it just seemed to be a bit faffy, if that's the, the right way to, to put it. I think the thing about it is, yeah, you do, they they, they do pull. I mean, that's what they're designed to do, right? They're supposed to pull into the yeah. cracks and, mm. and the folds and everything. So, but even that, you can do too much of that. So you have to make sure that you you do wipe off a bit of extra or, or just move it around a bit on the, on the brush and with the brush around the figure. So it, it's... You know, it's like everything. It's like everyone says. It's it's not the the perfect tool. There's no I such think, thing. I was going to say. I think for people like everybody here in this stream right now. I mean, we've all been painting for a long time. I'd say probably at least ten years. I mean, James, you're what, about thirteen years old or something. I think, aren't you? Mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> all of them, most people but, think. But, <laughs> yeah, cause I remember. But, I remember. I remember using the humble enamels. I know people were on about that in the Facebook group, weren't they? Yeah. Like, yeah. I remember and, using and, them as a kid on Airfix. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I mean, we've we've all developed our own painting style. So for something to come along that's completely radical and change it up, I don't think they, I don't think they're for us. No, do you know what I mean? I don't think they're marketed at us. They're, they're as I said, I said it before. They're, they're for, for beginners. They're, if you can, if you can paint a Space Marine in ten minutes with them and get it on the table and it looks okay. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of person you 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 they're marketed at. You know what I mean? It's not someone who does the triad system or someone who, you know, uh, spends ages painting Napoleonic buttons in the correct colour kind of thing. You know, it's they're 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 a tool in 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 different people's toolboxes. I think. Not for me though. Oh bloody hell! We're gonna have to get <laughs> subtitles. Look who's turned up. Oh my word! Hey! <laughs> Yeah, that's what it looks like, everyone. I'm sorry, folks. We, we can't afford Day. subtitles for the Yorkshire lot. It was just unbelievable. It is a Yorkshire oh, takeover oh, for Yorkshire Day. It is. Amazing. Unbelievable. <laughs> Don't worry, Ken. We're talking about you, not to you. Anyone hear me? <laughs> yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Can, we'll be, everyone we'll can waiting. hear you. We can hear you in Rotherham. We can, have we'll the microphone. You to, um, to bestow upon us why you think contrast paint are the greatest invention ever. Just you don't say anything if you think it's really good. That's it. He doesn't. He thinks they're really good. You need to have your sound on, mate. That's the problem. Yes, we we had this problem when uh, myself and Sean were recording with him in uh, uh, his, his podcast the other the other week. He couldn't hear us, but all we we 
He wasn't recording it though, because otherwise you'd have got about an hour of us just slagging. Any off. better? <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> there he is. There he is. Back yeah. in the room. Suddenly got a lot more northern. <laughs> it certainly blinking did. Yeah, it certainly blinking did. <laughs> Yeah, for this week we're going to be renamed. It's going to be renamed the Plastic Whippets Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that is ridiculous. Um, I don't think Kent can hear us. He still can't hear us. We can hear him, but he can't hear us. Oh, Ken. I mean, people have been using Zoom and, and these kind of things for at least two years now. You'd have thought everybody in the country knew how to use this stuff. Yeah, it's the trouble yeah. in Bradford. It all goes yeah, that's it's true. It's funny yeah. up there. It's yeah, yeah. funny up Bradford. Yeah. Way. Even the internet avoids it. <laughs> anyway, contrast, mate. <laughs> I'm interested by the new ones. That's the that's the bit. Mm. It's not got a new lot because you, you, none of you use them, but... Um, it, it does it intrigues me. They, they definitely. I'm just. I'm not quite sure what they're trying to achieve with them because the old ones were very much, um, you know, kind of just that easy, one coat and done job. But these ones seem to be much thicker and much heavier, much denser. Well, Games Workshop so have sure recently changed everything, haven't they? Because they changed mm. Null Noil and uh, and Agrax as well massively. Mm. Yeah. Uh, to much consternation across the world gaming world. Uh, I got some new, some of the new stuff, and it is it's a bit thinner. Than, it, uh, than the the older stuff, uh, but yes, yeah, um, they they seem to be just going through a massive change in their paints. Maybe mm. that's the, the they realised you know we 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 can sell everybody some new paints instead of a new codex, and that's that's the route they're going down for the next year or so. I know um, Dan's just mentioned that he used them on his um, epic ACW. Mm. Do you think from using them? Do, do you think the they work. They would work better on a smaller scale rather than sort of 28, 32 mil. So I I used them on my the the ACW epics that I painted, mm -hmm. but I didn't do many, and they were very quick and easy. Um, and because you don't really go back and highlight at that scale that much, it's not. It wasn't a big problem. So yeah, I think they work really well. I did try and use them on. Um, my late war Germans and I didn't find they worked quite so well there because I'm then trying to put camo on them and stuff like that just didn't mm. seem to quite work so well. And I wish I'd, I used it on the, I, I did a sort of, I can't remember which color it was, but it was um, a sort of yellowy color that was for um, uh, the smocks, the base color of the smocks. And then went in and did oh, the, yeah, yeah. try and do the dots on the top. And it just never really was strong enough to then when you put a code, um, then when you put a, a you know a wash over the top of it, it just seemed to just lose it completely. So um, yeah, I, I, it, it's like everything horses for courses, right? But then I did do I did use uh, a light grey undercoat. So maybe mm. if I'd done it as white, mm. it might have been better. I don't know. Sorry. I can yeah. imagine they, they they work pretty well with um, like a lot of figures. If you did mm. lots of small figures, like yeah. oh, six mil or something, you know, lo large blocks of them. I think they've worked. Yeah, well I think then. large probably the epic um, Napoleonics, the epic ACWs probably work really well for all mm. of those, I would think. Um yeah. well, as we say other Ken um painted his Napoleonic twenty eights yeah. with them. So um and I did quite a lot of mine as well. It all worked pretty well. Just mm. going to, to our cracks like Tim said, Tim, if you've not watched it yet, um check out tabletop minions. Um Adam from there did a um a sort of a comparison of the new washes so of the new agrax and the new gnome and the new um was it, I think it was sepia and they are slightly different um mm. i i don't i don't use agrax anymore because i got burnt too many times buying bottles that turned out to be well quite shiny once they dried in the figure so i don't use them anymore i've been i've been using um what i've been using i'm still using null oil because that's okay for the moment but I'm, I've been transitioning into using these these game wash ones from Vallejo, mm -hmm. and the the one I've been using the most is the um, the umber wash and the 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 the, the black wash the non oil. The, I have to water the black wash the black one down by about 50 50 water because it's really really dark. It's it's tremendously dark. Um, but results so far, I'm happy with them. They they don't they don't shine. They apply really well. They dry really well as well. Uh, I've also been using as a replacement for a Thonian camo shade. I've been using Army Painter uh, Military Shader, 
which is sort of a military green quite close to Estonian. Um, so there are there are there are alternatives out there for you. I mean, people know that for years I couldn't paint without Agra Agra Turchade. It was mm. let's get some paints on, let's get his hose pipe and blast the whole bloody thing with Agra Turchade, and it, it was just liquid talent. It made it made crap figures look well really passable. Yeah. Um, but when over, like, over the past year or so, I've had too many too many bottles of it that have just dried badly. So yeah, time to move on. Mm. Oh, Ken, you okay? Can we hear you? Can you hear me? Yeah, yes. we can hear you. Yeah. Hey! Yay! Hey! You now. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Internet's you know reached Bradford. <laughs> well, I've had, to, I've had to give the whip to that hamster on the electricity wheel. We're just being a lazy tart and not working hard. Enough. So, we're there. Right, that's demonetized yeah. this video. <laughs> yeah, that's full for that. Yeah. Well, secretly, <laughs> while, you, while you were talking about contrast paints, I think you muted me. <laughs> no, we're, we we're wanted really, your insight and... Uh, we wanted your insight into why you think they're so brilliant. Mm. <laughs> well, it's, it's revolutionised the way I've painted. <laughs> Revolutionised. <laughs> what I do, what I do is I sit at my paint paint uh, table, and I pick my contrast paint up, and then I throw it into the bin in the corner, you know, like a basketball player. <laughs> and I've got I've got one of them hoops that cheers when you get it in. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Revolutionised. <laughs> Revolutionised my painting. Have you seen the uh, one called Bradford City contrast paint? <laughs> <laughs> it like does the stripes and everything. You just put it on in one coat. <laughs> like Tart, did they do a Bradford like City one? <laughs> yeah, Bradford City strip coat paint. Yeah, it'd be, be interesting. It'd be good for for repainting your Subutio teams. Yeah. Oh, Subutio. Ah. Now we're talking. <laughs> so, Ken, Ken it, it, with contrast, is there any point where you could you would ever ever think you know what? I'll give I'll, I'll give one or two a go. No. <laughs> I think Silence I've, speaks I've, volumes. <laughs> I've 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 yet to I've yet to with my technique and the way I paint I've yet to find a use for them. Um, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do panel lining or stuff like that, then I'll use panel liner wash. Or if I'm in. If I'm going to put a wash on something, I'll put a wash on it. But because I use black undercoat, um, they're, they're really, you know, it, it, it yeah, you're not contrasting yeah, work, black, are you, at, at the end <laughs> of the day? So I'm not going to change a painting system that's done me all right for 44 years <laughs> to try and fit some new fangled Effectively, the food colouring, aren't they? They're, they're what you used to <laughs> uh, when you were a kid in home economics. That's what they are. They're just the the thin the, the thin paints. And I'm sorry to tell you, but you're all being done here. Games Workshop. They get that much paint, and then they get that much council pop, and then they put it all in a in a, and then they charge you twenty quid for it. Here comes the youngsters again. God damn it! I'm looking forward to Ken, Ken's revelation when he wakes up one day and thinks he can't live without contrast paints. <laughs> okay, no. move, moving on to something else. Again, there's a bit of a not not a touchy subject, but I think the next one could be something that you either really like or really don't like. I don't know how many people use it. Airbrushes. Love them. Yeah. <laughs> Hate them. <laughs> yeah. I've never used one. Never ever used one. I've got one of those cheap ones up there, the rechargeable things, but I've never even played with it yet. I I it's wish <laughs> I wish that I I like you. I've got two and currently they're both disassembled because I, I I you ever seen that episode of Alan Partridge where he disassembles his, his Corby trousers? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's me about the airbrush. <laughs> that. Did you put it back together with super glue? No, that, that would have been. <laughs> to be fair, that to be fair, that a caveat is you get what you paid for, and these were cheap. These were really cheap, um, and and the other reason I didn't like you is the compressor makes a funny noise, and I don't want the woman who lives downstairs thinking that I'm doing all kinds of weird stuff up here. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> weirder like, stuff. Weirder stuff, yeah. So I, I don't, I don't tend, I don't tend to. I mean, I, I, I've seen, I see people doing awesome uh, late war German camo with them, and it looks spectacular. Mm. And in, I've tried. I've really, really tried. I just, I just can't. I can't get behind them. I really can't. Um, like Andy that, says, that's here. what I use. That's what I use it for. Late war German camo mm. or mid war for me. And you, you know, the guys in the field are using either mops or brushes yeah. to put the paint on, <laughs> or hand spray guns. So, yeah. you know, I've got like an old battered brush that is my um, fifteen mil. Um, mop if you like and you can splat it on with that or or an, and a, you just get through so many tanks so quickly with an airbrush it's really quick see what what i tend to use a 28 mil is you know the, the sponge you get in blister packs mm. tear a strip off mm. put a bit of yeah, yeah, cellar yeah. Tape, bit of cellar tape around the end so i can have and then just dab it on and you can you can yeah, blend that's it perfect and it, perfect, and it, it looks like it all sorts of stuff yeah Mm. and especially with the, with the camera it looks like it's been applied in the field like ken said i mean it yeah, looks yeah. like someone's got on a big rag and it's got there we go some of that uh, and it, it, it just works really good um yeah i've i've been through three airbrushes and i just uh like andy just said there love hate relationship when it works fantastic yes uh and then when it doesn't you just want to i don't know kick it against yes. the wall or something and they just I, I you know i get to a point where i just i can't be bothered with it you know yes. <laughs> Uh, and I, I spend like uh, nearly half an hour sometimes just trying to paint a tank, and I think I could have had this done in five minutes with a brush. <laughs> what am I? What am I doing? Literally, what am I doing? You know, it's, it's uh, two uh, things that the, the two things that they're really, really good for um, that you might not have thought about. Uh, number one is blowing dust off your miniatures. <laughs> When, when you've been doing this for a, when you've been doing this for a long time and you don't game with stuff for three or four years, it gets dust on it. So get your airbrush out, gets rid of all the dust. I do have a, uh, a um, display um, cabinet um, full of my models. Yeah, I should use that. And I'm, yeah, I'm the same. Yeah, there, there you the go. Dust. Yeah. You can have that for free again, Alex. Thanks, Thanks I'll God, again, free. <laughs> um, the other one anyway. is if you if you if you if you've got a game at the club or something like that, and you you just finished painting and you need your unit to dry, airbrush. <laughs> you just use yeah. a hairdryer for that. Hairdryer, yeah. yeah. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <That's right. laughs> do, I, do I look like a man who has a hairdryer? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying nothing. Uh, I I'm probably yeah, the one out here then, because I I really like airbrushes. <laughs> For you. Yeah, people do. I used to, I used to work with a guy, um, and he does um, one thirty fifth scale modelling, and he makes about four a year because he spends that amount of time on it. But his his yeah. airbrushing was just insanely good. Um, well, that's, I, I was that's why I got mine to do modelling with. Hmm. Yeah, I got mine to do modelling with, but I just absolutely pain in the bum so i've just you know put it to one side i've found uh <laughs> so I've, I've gone through i'm on my third one and i've just ordered another one actually i found like the the like 20 pound chinese ones are either brilliant or terrible because they're so you get them and it's so bad it just falls to bits or mm. if you're using it for priming they're so rugged that they'll just go on forever but there's what it's one extreme or the other yeah and then it, can i can I bring mine down to the club, James, and you have a look at them for me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can do. <laughs> yeah, the ones that are knackered. Because honestly, I've, I've got no yeah. idea why they don't work. They'll blow air through them, but they don't push any any air. Uh, push uh, any, uh, nothing comes out at all. I've got no, uh, that completely ha that happened to That happened to mine. I gave it to my mate who does the, the scale more than he, He's got a, um, a Sonic. Sonic. Um, uh, yeah. And he said it, it, it may look clean, but as soon as you run it through this, a whole manner of crap comes out of it. And he said... That was the problem. It was just all it, what you couldn't see it, but it was all gunged up inside. I've got yeah. one of so them. The main still doesn't work. The main thing I use mine for is priming, <laughs> um, and it works, and it saves a fortune over buying like the rattle cans. Plus, I don't like the rattle cans for the environment -y stuff. They all kick off pretty bad stuff. Oh, you're they? such a hippie. I think you're doing it inside. Um, how, much, how many? I can see that for the got? inside bit for sure, definitely. I can see. Well, I've, I've done. Look, I've used one two hundred ml <laughs> bottle of Vallejo Primer black in like three years. You know, and that's what that's probably you're not like painting enough. 
They're not yeah. paying enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, yeah, it's, it's only like uh, 20 battalions of Napoleonics. <laughs> Um, yeah, and, well, and what, what have you done, last, what have you done next week? That's a Ken's advanced guard, that is. They're not big enough, it's probably only like one of Ken's pipe blocks, that's what the problem is. <laughs> yeah, um, but no, I've used it, because I, I, I really like the um, the finish that you get when you do it. So what I tend to do is, um, I'll do it black, but I don't like priming in black, normally I use a light no. grey. So what I do is I do it black because it covers really easy with the airbrush and you can see what you've done and see if you've missed a bit over grey plastic. And then I'll really quickly just whiz over it with some grey once that's dried. So you get like a, without getting too posh for Ken, you get like a xenophil without really <laughs> oh, trying. the red word, the red word. <laughs> <laughs> mm. the, the nice thing with that is, is that you can actually see like the bits on your minis because if you look at it and it's just black and I don't like bitting on black anyway, it's like, I can't see where the edges are. <laughs> so even from here, I can see the vein going in Ken's head. When he's yeah, he's going in there. I've said, <laughs> uh, uh, I've said airbrushes <laughs> and Xenophil in the same sentence. And that's just it. <laughs> Triggered him. I won't Triggered say what him. I want to say because it'll... Uh... It'll, it'll ruin your monetization if I start doing some... Well, at least you're not above me. Because if you're above me, I think I'd have a foot coming through the ceiling. I think I think with that airbrush, it, it definitely is a case of you get what you pay for. I think I was just too stingy to really pay for it. So. Mm. Yeah, but but is it one of those things things. that you really need to spend a lot of money on? Because you do hear people spend virtually nothing and then other people oh, spend an yeah. awful lot of money. So mm. I, I don't know. Intrigued. But then the thing I is, I mean, you just if you can try never get away with the cheap ones. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I think if you've yeah. never done it before, uh, spending that that money up front to find something that you might not like, that's the, that's the difficulty, isn't it? So, that's yeah, the problem. That's why I would one. never do it, because I, I, yeah, it, the crap it scares me off, work, and then yeah. the idea I've spent a fortune on it, and it's just going to sit up there like that one has, but I spent yeah, 15 yeah. quid or something on that, so that's fine. Yeah, imagine going out and buying a good airbrush, a compressor, mm. uh, all, all the tools. Um, a little box, then a mask, the gloves, the, uh, the 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 primer, the cleaner. It's it's a bit of an investment, and yeah. you could be spending it on figures. Exactly. <laughs> that, I knew, I knew that uh, that appealed to Dom. Exactly, that man. <laughs> well said, that man. <laughs> Dom's miniature. Oh, yeah, that that, that, that ends that argument right there. Yeah, that's finished. <laughs> right, move on. <laughs> so we're on, to, we're on to painting tips then. So. I'm trying to think, Ken. Ken, what what would you say? Because you paint a lot. What what would what would be your biggest tip for? <laughs> I think we know what this is. Stop <laughs> in about <laughs> painting. <laughs> it's the number one tip. It's the number. It's catching on throughout the country. It, it, it's the number. And there's, there's two bits to that, and that and 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 the first bit is don't sit around and stare and and read and do glow i do it everyone does it we all procrastinate while we're staring at the the net i've got some papal dragoons i'm trying to paint at the moment <laughs> and uh, from gringo 40 and they're the most complicated uniform on the biggest figures ever so i keep looking at them going oh stranger things i've not watched that shall we try that <laughs> for four seasons, 48 episodes later. Oh, I might try them people. So st stop messing about that way. But also, <laughs> there's so many different techniques and tips and and guides and YouTube things that you can get so wrapped up in different techniques and different methods mm. of painting that you can spend 60 hours on you know on one figure. Um so that, that's that's kind of the two things that I go by daily. But the the mo thing most people do when they they start off is they get um, over critical over mistakes and keep going back and repeatedly, you know, touching up here and there, here and there. And on a huge table with a thousand figures, you can't see it. You mm -hmm. can't no. see it. So yeah, yeah. And yeah, decide what you're going to paint, why you're painting it, and paint to that standard. <laughs> I think as well on top of that is is you you can always go back in future and fix mistakes. Just get it finished. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Get yeah. it finished to a, a, a standard, a tabletop standard. If if you want to go back and put more detail on it, then you can. You know, there's no one 
one's tell, the one sitting over your shoulder saying you can't switch that figure again. You can do whatever you want. I've done it. I repainted some uh, helmets on Germans from 20 years ago, you know, because they were they're painting the wrong colour 20 years ago, so I just repainted them. Mm. You know, you can do it. It doesn't matter. No one's... Uh, the, the the painting police aren't, aren't watching you, you know? No. Oh, they are. <laughs> they are. <laughs> They're out there. Well, they are now. They're out there. <laughs> so, Dom, when you're having what, Dom? When 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 you're having one of your really overly productive weeks, mm. are you working on several different things at the same time, or do you do you co- like so, yeah. so last week you you were working on your your Russians and your uh, old group Germans? Were they both on your desk at the same time and you alternated? Uh, yes. Generally, I'll have at least two or three things so i'll have a number of things uh like tonight i'm making up some parliament uh, some oh, parliamentary EC, ecw uh pikemen um so i'll be working on building some figures up then i'll be a whole load primed and ready to go of something else um in fact probably multiple of them ready to go and then probably two maybe three things sort of on the painting desk uh, that i'm working through and it because I'm kind of a mood painter, so you know, I just sometimes I just think oh, I want to do those Germans, and so I'll whack whack on those, and then next day I'll think actually, you know what, I'm going to finish off those Russian Napoleonics because they need to be done. Um, so it, it is, yeah, I always find that variety just helps me, just helps me all the time. I think that's a good, yeah, it's a good point, isn't it? It's kind of like a uh, uh, a sorbet, isn't it? Between courses, you can just go right, okay, I'm going to make a change and do something completely different. That's James. Hello. <laughs> evening. Good, good evening, James. Good evening. Can you hear me? Okay. I'm full in here. Yeah, we can hear you. Yes. Cool. Look at this. We got a full house. James, you're from the north. I know. <laughs> so, uh, the on, so we've, got, uh, we've got light in the building it's great <laughs> i think i'm just gonna have to give up tonight so like, Jesus. <laughs> five northern uh, <laughs> oh this this is, this is gonna go down in the the the, the history book the annals it's really, it's right really there. Yeah. <laughs> Or is it the Brady Bunch or the worst university challenge episode ever? (laughs) (laughs) I love that idea. It's like the Unwanted University Challenge. Oh, that's hilarious. I love that. It's kicking it through the (laughs) roof. Which Um, one of us is Brick? I don't know. I see Steve as a bit of a... (laughs) <laughs> no, actually, no. I think more of a Vivian. No, I was going to say I more of a Vivian. I, yeah, more I of a Vivian. I think I'd to be Vivian, given the choice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So, um, Are there any aspects of painting that's just to get out from under my wife's feet? <laughs> you know, I've said this before. I paint on the, in the on the <laughs> living room table because my wife um, doesn't like me coming out here to the cabin to paint. So while she's watching crap on the telly, I sit there and paint. Which is why she watches an awful lot of crap, and I paint an awful lot of figures. <laughs> there you go. Okay, I've got another question. This is one <laughs> I wanted to ask you for, for weeks, right? Imagine you're painting a unit. It could be a ten-man bolt action section. It could be a pike block. It could be a Napoleonic, whatever. And you're bored. You get you get halfway through, and they just don't wow you anymore. But you know you've got to get them finished. Do, you, what, uh, what do you do? Your experience here, Steve. Yes, <laughs> um, French French drummers. Is it a full unit? It was, yeah. it was just painting those French. Um, they, it just, <laughs> you know, you start off with a bit of gusto, a bit of oh, this is a bit new, and you, you get five or six figures in, and you think this is this is just terrible. Um, but I mean, luckily with those, I could put them away and burn them. Uh, well, I haven't burned them yet. <laughs> Look, I'm, ne- I'm never, never going to game with them, so I, I could just I could just put them away. But if you're actually building an army to play in games with and you've got to complete this unit what what tips would you give to people who who, who reach that sort of that block that oomph to actually overcome that hurdle and get it finished i want to know what circumstances you're in where you have to complete an army but, um well That's you could say you're going to have a game of black powder at crack corner two months yes before, i was thinking that, you've yeah. not got an army <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just change it yeah. do something else well, that's, that took, that's sort of what I did. So they, um, I really didn't like painting Landwehr 
So I didn't paint any land birds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Louis maybe knows exactly what I mean because uh, <laughs> those are not Try. the uh, most fun. Tried that. To me, I just I, I had visions of having a whole surprise and everyone when I, I rocked up with a <laughs> huge lamb bear army. I'd be like, ha ha, show you. And I painted 12 of them. That's the no, problem, no, though, no. is it? it's the vision at the end of it rather than actually doing yes. the work that gets to it. That's where I fall down every time. So I think um, it's well enough for that. I think having having. I've tried giving myself deadlines to paint something where it doesn't really matter because I can just change the deadline and it, it doesn't have any impact because I just <laughs> shove it in the corner and buy something new. Um, <laughs> but when it's like an event, so, I mean, well, the um, the last crack con, the Blood and Plunder stuff, so mm -hmm. I said I was going to put a Blood and Plunder game on. Uh, two weeks before, I realised I got two starter boxes completely new in the box. Um, so I just started painting them, and actually, I, I did quite enjoy those because the figures were completely different. I've mm. never done them before, but um, I think having having like a deadline that you know for me works because it's like that's a bit like mm. in work. When I'm at work, if we don't need to finish it, I'll just dilly dally. If it needs to be done like yeah. immediately, I'll get it done. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's always a way. But I think it was probably a bit different there. But I think giving yourself an actual deadline with some reasoning, uh, I think that gives you a lot of motivation to get stuff done. Yeah, I, I think I think painting in in small batches, you know, like mm. if say you've got a hundred figures to paint, just uh, even I'd say even doing twenty at a time is probably too many. Just do ten and then do something else. Just do something slightly different, or uh, do it and and have a little. A little reward for yourself for doing, say, twenty line figures. Have, then paint the officer, or you know, paint a cannon mm. or something. You know, wherever it is, something slightly different. Just so you know, you're working towards that. And you go right, okay. Now I've done these twenty figures. I can now paint something that's a little bit more interesting. You know, it's got more detail mm -hmm. on it, or I want to spend yeah. more time on it. And then you go back to you then you do the next twenty. So you do it in that. And I think John has said there. He said um, about taking a break working on terrain or just putting something else together just yeah something to, to kind of cleanse the palette a little bit i think that's that's a, a way of doing it when you when you're painting in large a, a large amount of things for turnips. a small short time <laughs> turnips. Like you always said, don't turn it a great way to get over paint you know it was remember last year i was i was really struggling with painting motivation i was a bit bored of painting bolt action so that's when i really threw myself into uh, painting turnip and I, I just painted so much. It was it was quick. Uh, in fact, I spent I spent longer building them than actually painting. The painting was really quite easy, but building them was it just got it was a whole new um, whole new new sense of motivation when it came to the hobby. Uh, but so I think mm. sometimes just trying something radically different. Dom hasn't tried it yet, though. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, Chip it away. It's interesting it. though. So I. I, I... Yeah, I'd say variety works for me. It really works for me. But I, and and I think I do definitely get mental block or I don't know, painters blocks or whatever on certain figures. I just don't fancy doing them. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a bit like you guys. I'm I'm not sort of driven by, you know, I'll just do something else if if that doesn't because I can't. So it's but then I do remember back in the day, you know, having a competition or something coming up and thinking I've got to get a unit finished to go to that that event because it's in the army list that I've submitted. You know that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> so I've had to, you know, so quickly pull together a unit and done it really quickly, and then, then sort of regretted it because it looks absolutely rubbish and having to go back and do it later. But I don't know. Some people, I, I, I actually like it when I've got a bit of a block with something. I'll leave it on the painting table in front of me. It'll just be pushed to the side. It'll be there. And I know some people get, you know, don't like that because it's almost like come to me you know you should be doing me and but for me i kind of like it because i don't forget about it and i will go back to it eventually it may mm. sit there for for several weeks and i had this quite a few times with quite a few projects and it'll just oh you did just sit there but i will go uh, back to it i get um well they're not in stock at the minute but i'm going to do a ken and and uh, sing the praises of ikea but i got like <laughs> loads of like um serving trays for like 99p so I bought, a, I bought a bunch of those, and I kind of put a little project on each one. So like the old group stuff I've been yep. working on, I put like all my Brits on one, and I put all the Germans on another. Um, but when I've got another one, which has got some English Civil War, which I've not touched in like six months, 
uh, which needs the airbrush <laughs> to get the dust off. Um, <laughs> but, and then uh, I've got another one, which I, I've always loved, like, sci-fi and space stuff, and I got some ships for Drop Fleet. Uh, and I was looking I was looking at them, like, earlier today, and I thought, why have I not painted those yet? So I just started painting them. <laughs> Because I felt like it, uh, so it's quite a. Uh, but so I have like a, it's almost <laughs> just have like a little rack of them piled up at the side of my desk. <laughs> it's quite nice because you can just look at oh I've got a little battery as that project and just pick it up and you're off. yeah I like that idea yeah I do similar sort of thing mm. not quite as organised but there's there's various piles of things around here that just like that's the next one oh it's not it's not organised it sounds <laughs> organised <but> it's not. <laughs> 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 so, uh, James, as, as you were last in, contrast paints, yes or no? Uh, never used them, but would probably not. Um, <laughs> probably not, just because I a... stick to the same painting routine all the time. I've tried to change it multiple times uh, and just can't. It's My brain doesn't work that way. I, I know what I know. That's how I do it. And it takes me nine months to paint four models. Uh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's ever finished, but that's how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you're having fun that's the most important thing yeah you're all just bad. boring farts you won't try anything new will you <laughs> <laughs> i never thought i'd say that as me <laughs> that's not, rich not quite from contrast you. but I, I did try the um scale 75 ones uh, i forgot they've got some other funny name not oh they're the sort of I yeah the i know the ones they're, they're not washing yeah. inks and things like that yeah do, they're inter- I, I, actually i said i was going to send them uh stuart from miniature realms to try out because i couldn't mm. get on with them <laughs> i like I, I like i like trying a new fad out but generally i just throw it away and go back to the uh original thing yeah that's <laughs> the same I, I, yeah, I definitely find that. I so think do you sometimes... guys never change your approach at all? Is there no sort of variation that you've done in what yeah, you do? Yeah, I do. I do. Oh, I have yeah. done, but it's, it's, a slow, it's a slow change. But I, I, mm. I don't paint the same as I used to paint. Uh, I'll find something new that I've found, but I won't. I, it's not like, you know, there, there won't be a, a cataclysmic event like the Games Workshop releasing a new set of paints that will make me change it. I'll just eventually come to a new, a new style. Right. You know, completely different. What I do now is completely different to what I was doing 10 years ago. What I was doing 10 years ago is completely different to what I was doing 20 the, years um, ago. Because like 20 tool, years ago, I was not painting with a three-inch brush. You know. Just like the techniques, your technique yes. improves. Right. No, I mean, my, 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 yeah. mine's changed over the sort of past sort of 18 months. So I, I've moved away from, I used to batch paint sort of, I, I, could, I could batch paint a section at a time. I don't do that anymore. Mm. I, I tend to do two or three at a time and really folk, but spend some time on them. Um, yeah, as I've yeah. mentioned a few times, I've, I've moved away from completely drowning figures in, in washes. I'm a bit more judicious now with the way that I use the washes. Um, and I'm a lot happier for it. I'm a lot happier that I'm I'm not batch painting sort of 10 figures at a time because it, it used to bore me. and I, 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 I used to rush through them just to get them finished, whereas now... Like the, the the British that I've been painting, I've been painting them two at a time, and really taking my time over them. Uh, it takes a little bit longer, mm. um, and that, that that's come full circle because when I first started painting bolt action, that's what I was doing. I was painting two at a time, yeah. and then I got into painting sort of then five and then ten, and then I'll be painting ten and a tank at the same time, <laughs> and I've come full circle. And I'm now I'm now painting less things at the same time, but I'm I'm focused on these weird bolt action lists that I've got. The more armor centric than than infantry based but i'm that's a big change and i don't think i would go back to the old way of drowning figures with mm. with washes so i said it earlier in the chat about you know there is something to be said anyway for spending a lot of time just on one figure and there's nothing wrong with that is there it's, no. you know it, your technique it should be fun it's a hobby you know what i mean at the end of the day if you if you if you're just churning them out and you're not enjoying churning them out, don't churn them out. Just no. paint one figure slowly at a time. You, know, <laughs> you said it, Paul. You true, said it. True. Short arms, <laughs> long pockets. I've always said it. We're just we're <laughs> careful Robin's with our money. That, you, <laughs> no, it's like, it's like when, I, when I was painting those land sketches, they. I mean, have you seen were... how much your games workshop paints are? Bloody hell, you didn't need a second <laughs> Yes, oh, you got them talking about money now, Paul. Now look what you've done. Uh, <laughs> I can't leave. I can't leave before going to the store. 
Look at that. Check it How much? How much? How much? How How much? 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 Because they were so colourful and you use so many different colours on them. Um, I had like a mathematical equation. So I was painting like <laughs> one, three, five with a green and then the, the remainder with, with blue. And then it was it was just mm-hmm. a, a good way. And it got them done quite quickly, but they were still quite detailed as well. So I need to get back. I, actually, I'm reworking my lancenets for uh, Warlords Vera one. They're going to be a they're going to be a knight army um, because I was never going to finish an entire landscape army. It was going to happen. So. <laughs> Concentrate on the smaller games. Um, oh, another, okay, another question, James. Um, airbrushes, yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Ooh. Although I think I've broken mine. Um, hey, welcome to the club. <laughs> I I use, the, yeah, everyone, everyone has. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, well, a novice to using it. I think it was one of the Iwata ones that I got oh, for yeah. Christmas. And barely, I think as far as they go, I think they go mental price wise but i don't think yeah. it's a very expensive one used it once to see how it went quite enjoyed it tried to come again and i'd, I'd glued the inside together somehow so it doesn't <laughs> work anymore um yeah i'm gonna need to clean that out but yeah i would uh, would recommend getting one again it, it, it scares me i'd do the same i'd do it one time i'd really think it was brilliant and i'd do about you know 50 million things with it and then I'd leave it for a fortnight because I wouldn't. I'd be so cat handed at cleaning it. I'd do a really yeah, crap yeah. job, <laughs> and I come back and it'd be dead. And it just it's like I'll oh, fuck that, chuck it away. Yeah, Tom, you, you, <laughs> could, you just described me and my mate's old barbecue. We'd buy a barbecue, <laughs> use it once. I think well, yeah. we'll, we'll we'll clean that tomorrow. Six months later, <laughs> like well, that's that's not going to work again, it's is it? Fur and <laughs> yeah. Things are growing on it. Yeah, you just turn it on and put it on really high and leave it for half an hour. It's fine. That doesn't yeah, kill you; makes fire. you stronger. Well, uh, um, but yeah, I mean, I think for me, in a in a in a hobby where most of the tools that we use are really quite basic, it's a real precision instrument. And I think for me, that's. It's. It, I'm not used to it. I'm used to a brush and a, a, yeah. a pot of water and some super glue, or a, a craft knife if I'm feeling particularly adventurous. Um, <laughs> but this thing's got moving parts and it makes a noise and you've got to clean it. <laughs> I, see, I quite, I quite like the mechanical side of it because I've always loved engineering and tinkering with things. So, so it, it kind of feels quite natural to me. Like I quite, I mean, but, but you can't go wrong with a paintbrush. But I, I quite like the yeah, like. Compared to like all of the sort of like digital stuff we have, it's still something which is quite physical and mechanical. Um, so, because until like the to get to the point where you press print and your model comes out and everything's filled in, mm-hmm. um, I, 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 just I just don't. don't me around, I, just, didn't it? it's... I just don't know how they work. They're like, um... <laughs> They're like so, yeah, to figure out the the different pressures. I think the first time I might as well have just thrown the paint. At the figure, just <laughs> mat it out all over. I'm glad it's too thin, and it, did, it took a bit of working out. But I was quite pleased with the end result. Um, but the amount of paint that I had to go through to find that medium, um, a couple of parts. The very Brilliant. first time, the first time I used that um, spray glue. Yes. Um, yeah. I was like, this is going to be easy. It came out like Spider-Man on steroids. It went... <laughs> <laughs> just, this, just this great big massive web. Or I, I think I, I actually I actually ruined... Um, I would, I'd, I'd been building a 37mm anti-tank gun for my, my, my US Marines. And that thing bore the brunt of that, you know... <laughs> this, this tsunami of, of, of glue. I was like, yeah, that, that's completely knackered. It was all gun stuff. It was just everywhere. Oh, it was awful. I've never used it since. Uh, but when, when like, um, Mel the Terrain she's used, he's like, shoo. These people, they just, I don't know how they do it. They? They, you watch them I, do it, and they're just, like, little dainty little yeah, things. The, and you think, the trick I get my big fat finger on it. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like it glory shot. Uh, <laughs> so I, I struggled. I struggled loads, and that's why I went through, like, two or three really cheap Chinese ones really quickly. But mm. I think, like, the, you've got to find a balance between just pouring in a tub of Vallejo or pain, which is just going to clog it straight up. Yep. <laughs> and not thinning, thinning it so much it's water. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's like a fine medium in between 
but you kind of mm. start to figure it out just by guesswork. And it's not like it's an exact science either. You just don't put too much thinner in until it starts working. Mm. And if it clogs up, you put a bit more in sort of thing. Um, but the one thing I wish I know another plastic crack topic, which I know everyone loves is like varnishing models. <sighs> I find it great for varnishing models because I've never trusted the rattle cans because the amount of horror stories you see of people which have made the models look frosty. Um, <laughs> that is the only them. stuff you need. Nothing else. Yeah, but sure how much is that? Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> how much? Professional. Doesn't matter. I'm a penny pinching. <laughs> Doesn't yeah, matter. It's expensive, Whether it's that stuff, professional. Yeah. It's inexpensive, but it works perfectly. I've been using it for years, mm. and it has never let me down. It's never frosted. Say, in all fairness, uh, I'm the same. Cheap. I've never, ever had any issues yeah. with that. It's, a, it's expensive, but pay for it. Yeah. The problem with rattle can varnishes is if you're like me, and you don't varnish metallics, hmm. You need to be pretty good with a rattle can to spray <laughs> yeah, them well, that's a bit different, yeah. and, and, not, and not the heart. That, that's that's <laughs> the skill that is. Just while we're on gadgets, can I bring up? Can I bring up the paintbrush portaloo? <laughs> <laughs> I, knew, I knew this was coming. I knew this was coming. Oh dear. Here we go. <laughs> Have you not seen it? The paintbrush oh, portaloo. Whoever can, whoever can access the internet and bring up pictures. Um, Google Green Stuff World a... Paintbrush Cleaner. Oh, yeah, I am. Yeah, the flusher, the flusher, the flusher. That's it. Yeah, these, these lads here were looking confused. <laughs> what on earth is that? <laughs> it's, it's basically you have, a, you have a tank with an upside down tank, like a water um, thing in an office, um, and when you want to clean your brush, you press the press the button, and the water comes out of the um, bottle down a little down a little trough into a hole, and then you wash, you clean your paintbrush in that bit of water, and then you press the button again, and it flushes the dirty water away. I'll just use the toilet upstairs. I think it's quick. <laughs> it sounds like a Japanese toilet. Is that what it is? Well, twelve pounds ninety six. Twelve pounds ninety six. They are. Well, is it guaranteed uh, not... to clean your brush or something? Why would you do such a thing? It's just use your cup of tea. I, 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 <laughs> I just, I, I despair. I, I, I honestly despair. I just, what, what, what's wrong with? I mean, I, I said it before, but I, I use an old egg cup. Yeah. Um, with water in, and I wipe it on a piece of kitchen roll. Yeah. Call me unadventurous. I use, I, uh, yeah, I use an old cup. An old Valiant cup, if you remember that uh, cartoon film about the pigeons in World War Two. My lad gave it me when he was four. Um, Do you want this for your painting, Daddy? He's now twenty-three, um, <laughs> and it's worked fine. I, I use this, uh, and, and I only change the water when when the uh, when the paintbrush stands up in it, oh. or when the cat has drunk it. <laughs> 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 uh, love it. Love it. <laughs> oh, dear me. <laughs> and I'll lick my brushes yeah. after I put them in there as well. That's a posh mm -hmm. jam jar. Yeah. So I use this jam jar. Yeah. So uh, who, with, with, these, with these, these fads then, these sort of things that are meant to make the hobby eat, who do they appeal to? Because I remember, remember Ken, you, you, when we were chatting, and I, you, you said it right. I mean, you may have someone who's new to the hobby never painted a figure before and they're like well i need to get my porta potty i need i need to get um my special brush cleaner i need to get this i need to get that and be before you know it they've, they've spent more on gadgets and little gizmos than than figures and paints and they've got they've got paint nowhere near any figures um so do you think it can, it can be sort of counterproductive to the hobby in having so many of these these gadgets out there to be fair if if games workshop are able to sell something to people that uh, that holds their figure for a fiver you can sell them anything <laughs> and they're gonna you know what i mean when 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 you could just use an empty paint pot and some blue tack and stick your figure yeah. on the top of that or pay five pound for this little grippy thing that does exactly the same thing the, the other people will pay anything for anything yeah. uh, you know fools and money are, are quickly separated <laughs> unless the yorkshire 
course, and then they just fall. Oh, yeah. So at least <laughs> yeah, the rich yeah, falls. Yeah, That's yeah. the main thing. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, so I've never really bought into any. I mean, another, another one of Ken's favorites um, wet palette. <laughs> oh, I use one. <laughs> Not all the time. The, the trick I found. So, if I've, I, I've, I've, I've got to do my video. My video is coming out soon. But there is coming. nothing. There is nothing that you can't tell me that wet palettes are useful for absolutely anything. Only, I've got. I've got, got a tube, I've got a tube of paint. I've got a tube of paint that's twenty-three years old. I don't need the paint to last any longer. It's twenty-three years old, and there's enough in there to last me until I die. I've, I've got one here. I've got one here, Ken. But you can probably see the layer of dust on it. Shows you how long it's just been sat there. Uh, get, get your airbrush on that, mate. Get your airbrush on it. Get it clean. Get what, it clean and put it on eBay. Good for when, when Yorkshire turned into the surface of the sun the other week, and you couldn't clean out your bottle before it dried up. It, that's when it was useful because you put it on your wet palette and it stayed wet for about five minutes before it dried up. Yeah. So uh, that's the yeah, yeah, that's yeah, fungus is already growing. The God, fungus God, is coming up. It's <laughs> got brittle. Have that's how long it's been. I've not used it for. Dom, have you ever used one? I, I, I have for a short while, uh, but I just, it's, it's, you know, I'm just a lazy painter. You know that. And anything that's, I, I, I agree entirely with Ken. To me, you know, the price of paint is, okay, it's a little bit expensive if you're buying 100 bottles at the same time but the amount of time they last even if i just waste a little bit by putting it on i use a newspaper there's a bit of old newspaper that i use for mine i don't and that's all i use and yeah it dries out but by the end of the session it doesn't matter i'll just put another blob on tomorrow and do it again so no i i don't i i can't get on with them just can't be asked really it's too yeah, much like that's my that's my wet palette which is just a palette yeah <laughs> I got it from the works for that. <laughs> it works, works perfectly yeah. fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> show your palettes. Hashtag show your palettes. Show your palettes. Be proud. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm intrigued though because I think you know you talk about all those little gadgets and things, and I'm and I know the there's various things that the that Games Workshop and other and other vendors try and flog us like crazy, but. Apart from the the handles, the, the stupid handles that are great if you're doing one figure, um, but as you say, you can just put them on a pot, on a pot and whatever. Anyway, um, do they really flog them that hard? I mean, or is it just do people just think it's a, a nice easy route to uh, you know, be an quick and easy to use? Isn't it? That's I think that's what they get. People which don't know, you get someone's auntie or whoever goes, "Oh, buy them this thing." For right, Christmas. exactly. Yeah, and then, yeah. I suppose that's true. Yeah. Because well, you know, I mean, I, you don't. I, I, I mean, I don't know. Do they swear put, by these do things? They, I mean, I mean, whatever magazine it. is currently the thing. I don't know. Sorry, Dom. You carry on. Sorry, mate. Um, you know, is it? You see lots of ads for it and things like, uh, is it White Dwarf or whatever is that still going? I don't know. <laughs> that, that tell you that you know you must have this gadget or not. I don't know. But I, I think you're right. It's more like family and friends that just walk into the shop and go. I've got fifty quid to spend. What can I buy? And the salesman goes. But I think we all we all brush. suffer. It's Everybody, perfect. humans, all suffer from uh, shiny syndrome, don't they? And they, they want something oh, yeah. new and shiny, and they want something, you know, whatever it is, whether it's new figures, whether it's new a new thing to help you paint, you know, because everybody did go mad for wet palettes just a little while ago. Uh, mm. uh, and I, you know, I admit I got caught up in it. But like we were saying before, I've. I've, my my painting style has changed so glacially that introducing a wet palette to it was just too much of a shock to the system, and it was just you know, useless for what I do, you know. And, and I think well, it's, it's the same as everything. You know, you see something new, you think, well, I should have that, and then you realise that you could do it half the price or cheap or free when your paint pots run out. So with brushes, though, I mean, I know some people. I know. We, we discussed on on the, the podcast with Ken about you know what what brushes would you out would you invest in, and I tend to use sort of one or two Windsor and Newton that I I fork out a lot of money for, but then I've just got really work a day sort of workhorse other brushes that are just not expensive at all. And I think that's for me that's a good a good way to go about it. Um, I don't know 
what other, what other people do do you all use cheap ass brushes or do you use really expensive ones yeah just like ken i like ken i use rat hair brushes <laughs> did you hear me yeah. Oh, yeah. i i use a i use a pro <laughs> we'll as well. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. because you, you, you sure. get to um is it abc brushes yeah. at the shows ABC, and it, it's yeah. like a the only problem is, is they're all tiny because one of the tips i have is like use a big brush not a small brush because I, I for ages i used to be trying to use the smallest brush i could to the details and actually i found just use a big one it's much it's much easier to use a big brush and then tidy it up afterwards than to try and spend three hours yeah, yeah. doing it with a little one. Um, I did use those Russian ones Dom mentioned. They were mm. quite good, but you can't get them anymore. No, <laughs> something's <laughs> gone on in the world. You can't buy them anymore. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, they, they were quite good, actually. The pro, the pro art ones are great. Like, because I bought a bag, a massive bag for like a tenner, and I've used like two in the last last year. I mean, apart from the fact that they they're supposed to hold the point longer, is there really any other genuine advantage to super expensive brushes versus just averagely? Yeah, you know, I'm asking in, in an all interest because I've used all sorts, and I couldn't honestly tell you which are the best ones and which are the not are just their brushes and they do the job or they don't in in, gen, in in general the more that you spend on a brush the the longer it should last if it's if it's correctly looked after yeah. so you know artists doing oils mm. will go for a you know really expensive brush but if you're dry brushing space marines or uh, tanks or something like that you, you're gonna screw up a 40 quid Windsor and Newton massive hog hair brush pretty quickly and you're going to be crying in your wet palette so yeah. <laughs> it's, it's also, for me the pro, the pro art and I know I bang on about them all the time they, they're not that expensive they're more expensive than a standard brush but they're not that expensive and I've been using them for over 40 years so I can't really you know if, if, if I've been using them for that long there must be something to ride with them and um, they must be fairly cheap. So. Uh, <laughs> that that ABC brushes, lad, with them big, um, big things. The, the, the slight seconds, if you notice, it's misprints on the on the barrel. Um, yeah, that's how we get them so cheap. Um, oh, right, right. But um, yeah, that, that's and you, you can, if you go into an art shop, they normally have little packs with different size brushes in that are probably half price, two thirds price, well worth getting. I, I can honestly say, Gary, I've never done that. I've never dipped mine in no, no liquid. No. Yeah. I, um, you have brush soap, I don't tried, you? Um, brush I soap. Soap, yeah. Yeah, Stuart. I think it's the one Stuart recommended it, didn't he, on Miniature Realms? So I thought, I'll try it out. It, it does help. I think it's the, other, it's the problem of buying expensive brushes and not cleaning them, which I think most people probably suffer from. Mm. Because we're all the same, like, same with airbrushes, isn't it? Like airbrushes, <laughs> pallets, we just get a piece of whatever and use it and throw it away or let it get that thick. Um, <laughs> I think we're, we're all a little bit lazy when it comes to the little bits like that with, 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 with painting. As we've done it, right, let's just chuck whatever away and, and look at what we've just finished. I think mm. for me, it's I, I does anyone use like special um, actual dry brushes with like the funny sort of layered uh, angle? I love them for paint for doing armor <coughs> with. And I know dry brushes don't last very long anyway, but I seem to be constantly <coughs> cleaning mine. I can I can clean it as much as I can, put it away, and when I, when I come out ne the next time I use it, it's always in a really piss poor condition. Do you know, though, um, I, I used I had some of those really flash ones from Army Painter, and I think... Oh, oh they were the, the, the round ones. Yeah, the other ones. Yeah. And then I had some others from somewhere, and as you say, they got all clogged up. And then I can't remember, I was in super drug or somewhere like that with one of the girls and and um they were buying makeup brushes and i thought oh that actually looked perfectly good and i picked up a set of three different size makeup brushes that were rounded with fluffy tops on the end and, uh, and they are brilliant they absolutely last forever and i i use them all the it's time like that. yeah i've got smaller <laughs> versions and and that sort of size one Have really? you tried, uh, so i've got some of those i got these uh, these humbrol uh, these are dry these are supposedly dry brushing brushes by Humbrol. I got loads of them ages ago. 
they've lasted forever. Mm. They're knackered, but they, you know, when I'm dry brushing, that's all I need for doing it, tanks. It doesn't matter. Yeah, so yeah, much, they're, does it? they're yeah. good as well. The the uh, makeup style brush is nice and soft. Mm. I wonder if you could use. What dry brushing with that huge one, Alex? Is it Barnsley? <laughs> 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 It came as part of a set. I use the smaller ones. Yeah, yeah, I use that. I use that for doing my details. Oh. That's for painting eyes. <laughs> on 15 mil. <laughs> do well, lads. Do well. No, the one I use, it's um Army Painter large dry brush. And I've had I've made it to be fair, I've got a good, I think probably a good nine months out of it. And it just needs a bit of reactivation. Um but it works fine. I think with, with, with dry, I mean, I know some people will probably say, "What well, you, you you buy a brush just for dry brushing?" And I like the edge on it. It's got a, a slanted edge. Mm. So if I'm doing if I'm doing sort of uh, sharp corners on on um, armor or, or tanks, or whatever, it's really good for that. Um, but mm. it, it works quite well. I'm not a bit. I'm not a big dry brush though. I don't read the only the only dry brushing I do is literally on armor. I don't use it on on yeah, infantry. Same. I don't use it on on anything like that. It's just, just literally on vehicles. Yeah, same. I tend same to here. use my own. Uh, yeah, brushes, my... small brushes for dry brushing. I'll, mm. um, uh, they you kind of have a, a life cycle where they come in through the door and they get yeah. treated to a <laughs> you know, like a, a velvet pad on the side of the paint table, and then they'll lose the little <laughs> bit. And they'll, they'll go to do the blocking in, and and then they'll they'll get shoved in the pot to do the dry brushing. And then it's like a Viking, they're out in the garden and they're getting burnt on the fire when they're finished. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. So I, my, mine, a lot of my brushes do the same. I, I paint with them until they get absolutely knackered, then they become a dry brushing brush, and then they, yeah. they are, they're gone. You know, I, I'll have a clear out every five years or so, and I've got these brushes that I haven't touched in years, so they're just gone. You know, it's like, they're like out of the door. <laughs> So you guys, when you do your standard painting, what's your standard brush size for for general? Not detail painting when you're just slapping colour on a figure. What what size would you go? Oh, that's a good question. I I use uh, whichever one I pick out of there. <laughs> I I to use this weird one. <laughs> it's I just it's a, I look it's a at funny the, shape. I look at the tip. I look at the tips on these, and I think, is that thin enough? I'll get that one. <laughs> I've no idea what size to say. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. That's what I'm saying. There's some bald rats in Rotherham with them paintbrushes. <laughs> hey, they're pro so that, art. They're all, most of those are pro art. So that's, a sort of, that's a wedge one. Sort of a, it's a, it's like a, it goes like that. And I, I use that for, if I'm painting bolt action, I, I apply the base, I, I prime with it. I also apply the, uni, the base uniform colour with it as well. Um, but for actual details, I use either a zero or a double zero. Okay. I use a one I my... primarily, I think. One. I tend to be my base paint I, thing, uh, majority I of things. Use, usually use a size two, I think. Except the 50 mil stuff. I've been using a one, I think, with the 50 mil stuff. Yo, the fit with at 15 mil, so I've been using it at a, a five naught on that. <laughs> so, yeah, but you are doing the gleam of their eyes. <laughs> these these are the uh, two that I've been using on my marines recently, and this one is the Pro Art 10 0 uh, or medium pro brush, and this one is an Italiera zero. So that's just the two that I grabbed. That's what I've been using for the last couple of days. But I don't really care which as long as it's big enough to do the job I'm doing, that's yeah, that's, a, that's the size of it. I mean, with these 15 mil, that's the first time I've used that five naught brush. Yeah, uh, I'd, ne I'd never use mm. it on on 28 mil. It's just good for mm. because they're so small. It's just good for you know really really detailed stuff on there. To, to quote the late the, the, the late great Bob Ross, two hairs and some air. That's what the fa the, the, the five zero <laughs> brush is like. It's just barely <laughs> anything to it. <laughs> right, chap, you're gonna you're gonna stick around while we look at some viewers' photographs. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dom, have we got any news? Oh, yeah, we probably do, actually. God, it's been so exciting, Yorkshire Day. Look at this. <laughs> it's almost like we planned it. Uh, let me see. Yes, there were a couple of things I saw. Well, here we go. 
Oh, this was uh, Martin saw this and flagged it to you, Steve. I think. Oh, think yes. Oh, New Bushido. Oh, these clan these figures, group, man. whatever oh. they are. So um, they do look kind of interesting. They're also foxy, foxy bingo things. I don't know. Whatever foxy they stokes. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty cool. So obviously because we don't know anything about Bushido, don't know exactly when they're coming out, but um, they're, they're, they're on the market at some point. So they there you are go. so, so nice. They look fun, don't they? They, they, they look, look fun. really good. I thought you'd have... They, do they not count as weird shit, Dom? They do count as weird shit. Yeah. Right. I can admire so just, weird shit. I just wanted to, I'm going to do get, it. <laughs> I wanted to make sure the benchmark was still in place. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Shall I do the alert, shall I? There, you go. <laughs> there we go. Uh, VMV? They've got some new Arab Ooh, archers that do look really yeah, nice. good. So that's these fellas. Um, yeah, really nice models. I guess Meza will have these. If he hasn't already, he'll probably be getting them soon. Um, so really yeah, because nice they're still shipping. They're still shipping they are out. still shipping mm -hmm. from Ukraine, yeah. yeah. So that's them. Um, and the other thing I saw... Uh, Warlord's got some new Italian vehicles out for their um, so yeah. the, the Simaventi self propelled gun, the medium truck, and the uh, I want to say Brenda prime mover, the Brenda um, prime mover out. And the other thing I was going <laughs> to flag up just because he's a friend of the channel is Ian at Boards and Swords has got a couple of really good looking events coming up that people might be interested in. So he is big into Black Seas, the Windy Bow game. Um, actually, Ken and I had a game, not this Ken, the other Ken, had a, had a game of this on Friday. Really good fun. I really do like the Windy Bow game. Good game. So he's got a, <laughs> a large reenactment game going on on the 3rd of September. And then um, he's got the full Monty. <laughs> he's doing oh. the Battle of Trafalgar. <laughs> uh, that's the weekend or the Friday boop, boop. after we're boop. up there. Yeah. The so, uh, plug the group, he put a picture of his. I think it was Trafalgar, weren't it? Where yeah, where they it was did like six tables long or something like that. It's enormously good it was game. Massive. It looked really yeah. good. Lovely. Yeah. That's what we want to see. Big games, eh? Big games. They're not twenty-eight yeah. mil though, Ken. They're not they're too small. They're not twenty-eight mil. You need a big car park to do Trafalgar in twenty-eight. <laughs> you need, I'd need Yorkshire, I think, wouldn't you? I'd have needed some naval rum after rigging that many ships. <laughs> yeah. I'd be pouring yeah. it in my eyes after after putting after uh, doing that many. Uh, another bit of news. Do you not remember? After, after... Sorry, Go on. Carry on. Sorry, I was going to. I was going to say, there's another, another piece of news I've got to, another, another photograph for is um, Privateer Press are releasing a new up to date version of War Machine. Um, oh. I think it's going to be I think it's going to be War Machine Mark IV. And I'm looking forward to it because I know me and Martin have talked, talked about War Machine in the past. And it's just such a fun, fun game because it's just about big steam powered mechs running into the middle and punching the absolute crap out of each other. <laughs> um, Mm, no tactics, no finesse. It. It's what? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's. I I played a lot of it in sort of the mid two thousands. Um, the first edition I used to play, absolutely brilliant, brilliant, brilliant game. So, um, I'm looking forward to getting hold of that at some point. Um, so are you guys going to stick around for some viewers' photographs? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's yeah. go for some of these. There's been so. I, I, as always, I'll get rid of us now. So, <laughs> oh, we can. <laughs> <laughs> There's been some absolute total stonkers uh, posted this week. Um, I've grabbed as many as I could. Again, we can't. We, we'd be here till well next Wednesday if we were to show them all. Uh, but yeah, oh, yeah. Just... I don't know about anybody else. I'm, I'm not doing anything. Louis David <laughs> just mentioned the uh, Louis David just mentioned the board games Atlantic uh, bugs in in space. What, oh, they're doing Space now. Nam. Yeah, Space Nam. Yeah, yeah. They're, those look really good, actually. Yeah, they do. <laughs> like In fact, I, I was good. <laughs> I was good. I was going to use. I was going to use them. They're being known for Conflict Forty Seven. Um, I could use them with my my US Marines. Um, but I think yeah, War Games Atlantic are churning them out at the moment, and it's just such a 
a random range of things that they that they produce as well. It is um, so extraordinarily random. Yes, isn't it? It's like literally yeah. one minute. Uh, it's very historical, and then they'll off do some horses, and then the next thing they'll do whatever those bad things are. Unbelievable. The next, the next time we do a vote on what people want, I think everyone should go and ask for Gary Baldy. Nah, that's a good yeah. idea. <laughs> give Ken loads of new plastics. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the. I'm looking forward to the ogre lambs snaps though. They, they're going to be. Um, they're going to be quite good. Are you going to do I, some of mate... those and turn at them? I want to see Possibly you do my that. Mate, my mate refers to them as land um, land shreks. Land shreks. <laughs> 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 I like. Yeah, I find it. Right. Right. Uh, 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 on the sun. Oh, definitely. Um, okay, so on to. So first up is Andrew with some. Punic Wars, look at those. Oh, lovely. Nice. Oh, lovely. I do like a Very bit nice. of uh, Punics. They are lovely. Very nice. I think the, 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 uh, the whites on them are brilliant. Yeah, he's mm. done a really good job. Just can't paint white, but they are really, really good. Um, didn't, he, didn't he blame Martin? And he's going to do some uh, some snow basing for them as well. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> Listen, we've only just recovered the, uh, the talking about snow again. We're not going to do yeah. that one again. Um, Jeez. Here is Andy from Hobby Support Group and his six mil black bronze wickers. Excellent. The men in black. They are. Great stuff. Yeah, that's lovely. They are. I do love the sort of wavy effect of his bases. I think yes. that's great. It looks really realistic, doesn't it? And mm. I don't want to be tempted by six mil Napoleonic, so I'm going to turn that off in a minute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because they are they are tempting. They are I, I love I just love the way they look. Oh, I've, got, I've got to get rid of that. <laughs> my, my brain's going all over the place where I stop now. Um sticking with uh, Napoleonics. Uh, some Anthony. So these are the fifth Dutch militia. Oh, very nice. Those are really nice. Very good indeed. Mm. I'll be honest, I'd never heard of the fifth Dutch militia, so I've learned something today. <laughs> <laughs> what you know <laughs> about the fourth Dutch militia, though, didn't you? Oh, the fourth. I'm all over the fourth. Oh god, yes. Yeah. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on mastermind <laughs> about the fourth. Uh, which man which manufacturer makes are they are they warlord or? I no, I think don't they were in, he mentioned it, didn't he? They were metals, did I think? Yeah, they were metals, yeah. Metals. They must be something like actually they don't look like front rank. Foundry, maybe? Sure. <sighs> don't know. Someone will know. They are I mean no. warlords are supposed to be doing some plastic uh, Yeah, I uh, I've seen the warlords. Dutch. Oh you saw them at the open day, didn't you? I remember you yeah. saying, yeah. Hmm. Um, I haven't seen anything of them yet. So, so a bit different now from Bjorn, and he managed to paint up 48 Zulus. Oh, wow. Nice. Oh, they are yeah, stunning. Nice. Absolutely stunning. Awesome. Lovely. Painting, painting them. I think it, I think it, it didn't take him very long to paint them up either, but they are really, really nice. They're fantastic. Oh, mm. Great stuff. Back to Napoleonics with... <laughs> <laughs> from, Gap, from Gary, some French Voltigeurs. Very good. Excellent. Very nice. I yeah, painted some of these. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You still got the battle scars, haven't you, Steve? Well, I chopped some of them up and turned <laughs> them um, as well. But no, they are. They're really nice. Again, I, lo I love the, the, the white effect he's achieved on those and the epaulets as well. That's. Oh, oh, I wish I could paint Napoleonics. I really do. But they are fantastic, Gary. Really, really nice. Yeah, they're lovely. Are they Perry's? Yeah, I believe they're the Perry's plastics. Yeah, Perry's plastics. Like. They're yeah. the uh, the skirmishers you get in the box set. So I forget which one oh. it is, but yeah. Or you can you can uh, chop them into bits and pieces and stick. To no, you can't, Steve. Like Move on. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> like what I did. Um, this this is fantastic. Now, this is um, Ian. This is his first post in the Facebook group. Boom, look at that. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, wow. Absolutely that's stunning. Talk about coming in hard. Yeah. yeah. That's, um, yeah. These are Lancastrians. I've got no idea who they are. Wow. That must be oh, Queen oh, Margaret, I guess. I wonder who she is. Queen Margaret of um, Anjou, I guess. <laughs> but I know he, he, he did some um, some foot as well. I think they were the, um, 
don't know whether they were Bill and Bo, I'm not quite sure. But they were they were just equally as good. But that command base just blew me away. Absolutely fantastic. And oh. I do I do love the basing. I mean the figures yeah, are amazing, it's but the basing is really, really good, yeah, isn't yeah. it? It looks really natural, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yes. Yeah. Is that uh, a he, mm. painted swan on the standard bear on the left as well? Yes, I think so. Oh, really. God. <laughs> I wish he hadn't pointed that one out. <laughs> there's, a, there's a good bunch more pictures as well, isn't there, Eddie up as well? They're, yeah, there is. Really, yeah. really it, great. Ian, please keep posting up because these are really, really, really good. Okay, right. It's 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 weird shit alert. Um, this is from Gaza, <laughs> and look at that, that chaplain. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I can, see, I can see Dom and um, Ken and <laughs> Alex looking on in just pure <laughs> the bloody hell's that. That is, that is really, really nice. Ah, really good. Oh, I want the base yeah, as well. The base. Yeah, the base is excellent. Mm. Uh, the gold trim against the black armor uh, that looks really mm. right. That's forty k, lads. Just thought, just started letting you know. Thanks. I've got the tech best base marines. I know all about forty k. Uh, up next, so we Rogue, Rogue Trader. Is it? Yes, that's the best version, Rogue Trader. Um, we mentioned Blood <laughs> and Plunder Alex. earlier, and these are from Carl. Look at these. Oh, oh yeah, these wow! Oh, they're, oh, they're nice. Aren't they? yeah. They're very the character full on. They, 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 really they just nice. seem like a really jolly nice bunch, minutes. don't they? Yeah. <laughs> it's a jolly bunch come and kick your head in. Great. <laughs> we should hopefully, hopefully, we'll be seeing these. I think he's been that one. The front looks game. like uh, Oliver Hardy, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> 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 he does. It does. Yeah. Oh, that looks like a good. night out in night out in Hull. That does. <laughs> 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 uh, Leeds are blue and white. Yeah. I've got an urge to show up at Crackcon in stripy pirate trousers. <laughs> <laughs> you still owe a cod piece, remember? It can be arranged. You can <clears throat> combine them, stripy trousers and a cod piece. <laughs> yeah, and rock up in that like tiger place. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like I'd be like guest of honor. Uh, <laughs> um bit more Lord of the Rings. So Lee from Battle Bunker has been painting some Rohan Warriors. They're rather nice. They're very good, aren't oh, they? Lovely. Yeah. Very nicely done. Yeah, they're, 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 really, they're really nice minis as well because the, 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 most of these are the Perrys, aren't they? The old, the old blood mm. rings. Mm -hmm. Oh, the metallics on there. The, the gold just really pops mm. out against the um, the rest of the armor. Oh, mm. really good stuff. Uh, what's up next? This is Star Wars Legion from Lee. Now these these just oh. jump out. Look at the colors. Look at the colors on those. You, you can tell who the boss is, can't you? <laughs> I, I, I want a coat or a robe like that. It'd be brilliant. Uh, <laughs> anyone else see Ken wearing one like that? <laughs> Maybe we should get one for crack on and put Ken in one. I can imagine Ken wearing that flail, flailing around, clutching a bottle of Bailey's. Jeez, that'd be a, that'd be a sight to behold. Um, but they're awesome. I just think that the, the 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 vibrant colours that Lee's chosen on them ah, brilliant. Right, lads, break yourself. More weird shit. This is brilliant. Uh, Blood Angel Praetor. Look at that. Oh, wow, well, that's. Awesome. That's from um, that's really Matthew, brilliant. who's been working his way through his Horus Heresy uh, plastics, which I am still avoiding. I don't need to look at them because <laughs> <laughs> they're just too tempting. They look so nice to me. That's how Space Marines <laughs> should look. But he's absolutely flying through these. Absolutely brilliant. He's posted some more today um, of his uh, Sons of Horus. Again, excellent stuff. I would highly recommend you check out Matthew's uh Horus Heresy. Um, up next is Roy, the priest. Oh, I've oh. got that model. It's, oh, it's, it's done a brilliant job. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. Excellent. Super. Is that the singer from Ghost? I thought it was. No, I thought it was Bruce. <laughs> That's a very, very niche, <laughs> a niche joke there yeah, for a few, I, the few of you that know know that metal. <laughs> That's. I, I just again. I just love the the highlights on the purple and the the um the gold. Really, really good stuff. Mm. Um, speaking of lance nets, here's a lance net officer by Stephen. Look at that! 
I've actually painted. I've actually painted this miniature myself, and it was a, it was a lot of fun to paint. So much detail on the um, the slashes and the uh, the different types of uh, material. Brilliant, lovely figure. Actually, I think he's uh, he's he, that um, the 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 plume on his hat. That's that's been added. That's not on the original figure. Nice, nice way of um, make, yeah, making him a bit more flamboyant than he already is. I like uh, the um, the flowers on the base <laughs> match the colours as well. That's quite a nice touch. Yes, yeah, I've kind of noticed that. That's brilliant. I mean, that's, that's just like put as many colours into a figure as you possibly could, isn't it? It's brilliant. Slam, that's so right, lovely. Uh, it's brilliant. Alex, Alex, one for you, mate. Yay! Oh, good. Hey, <laughs> oh. This. This is Tim, and he's made a bit more progress on his um, early war BF. Yay! Oh, group. They are lovely, lovely stuff. Brilliant. Great stuff. Very good job. Look at that. Oh, I'm really enjoying people's old group output oh. on the group as well. Um, but that, yeah, I've, been, I've really, really, really enjoyed watching Tim's BEF sort of yeah. progress at all, all his updates. Now. Fantastic work. Tim, Those Matildas are amazing. Yeah. Yes. Really, and really nice. thanks as well. Yay! Yeah. Right. Be. Wrong, so wrong. <laughs> I'm, and we no. can, and we can. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Can you delete and these last, two off the no. stream, please? <laughs> it can be arranged. <clears throat> um, and last but not least is Robin, <laughs> with a bit more weird shit, and he's got some imperial fists from um, the Horus Heresy. Lovely, absolutely weird. lovely. Mm. I like the uh, the weathering on the uh, bottom of the legs, which yes. blend them in. Oh, the, the more people post these, the more I'm tempted by them. Stop it, people! Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> because holes in the armor. Yeah, I mean, some, it's someone someone nice from a nostalgia point of view. Someone that grew up with the Beaky Marines and the old RTB01 mm -hmm. uh, Space Marine box, they're just a throwback, but they're bigger and they're actually how Space Marines from the Heresy era, era should look. And it's horribly, horribly tempting. Bad people, <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, some, um, again, some cracking work as always. Uh, really, really um, good stuff. Um, did, oh, what's this? Martin should link us into the Horace Heresy O group. No. Um, well, we'll get in contact with Martin and find out. Just mentioned that, Steve. Do, do, do. I've sent you a picture of the, of the war game in Portaloo on email. Oh, I've just seen so it. Yeah. Put it up as, a as a screen share so we can everyone can gasp <laughs> in horror at the uh, <laughs> what it is. That is unbelievable. Hang on, basically bring cool. the screen. Let me bring <laughs> it up. Hang on. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, it makes wet pellets look quite sensible, really, doesn't it? It does, yeah. It does. <laughs> I thought I'd never say that, but yes, it does. <laughs> I mean, just... Oh, what? That that looks like some kind of kid's game from the 1980s. <laughs> He wants well, guess who it's a B day. Well, like what you see in French afterwards, uh, it's French hotel rooms. All the, uh, all the total <laughs> just see yeah, really. James Bond strapped to it and being tortured by the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> the, thing is, the thing is, as well, some I mean, people have got limited space on. I mean, some people have got limited space on their their, their work area. You don't want something like that clogging up precious space. Mm. <laughs> it, look, it looks like a, one of those water dispensers you get in the office. <laughs> what, what's going to happen when you pick it up and try and drink it? Because that's what everyone does. You have a paint pot, you always try and drink it at some point, <laughs> don't you? So if you pick that up, it's just going to go everywhere, isn't it? Paint or tea is my favourite game whilst I'm doing my whole I've yeah. found a way of, I, I've got a cunning way of not drinking paint water. I wash my brushes in carling and it just <laughs> <laughs> cleans them every time. Cleans them every time. And I'd rather drink the paint water, to be honest. <laughs> right, we're almost at 10 o'clock. Massive, massive thank you to Alex, to James's, and Ken for the Northern Thanks, Invasion well. tonight. Yeah. Normal service will be resuming next week. Oh, oh yes, Dom. Do you want to get, again <laughs> fill people? In oh yeah, yeah. Week? So again, so next week we've got Very Dave Brown guest next week uh, yep. coming on. He's uh, going to talk about all things O Group, uh, General Darmay, 
because I think there's a couple of new supplements for both of those games coming, um, and also other stuff about his um, sort of more gaming journey, I guess, is the simplest way. So, yeah, uh, that will be on my channel next yeah. week. So, really, really there. looking forward to... Yeah, me too. Really looking oh. forward to seeing, uh, seeing him. Cutting on. the war gaming fat with... Uh, mm. um, right, we're at 10 o'clock, so I think we all better be off. Uh, again, big massive thank you to everyone that showed up. Big <laughs> thank you to everyone who's watching this on the replay. Well done, Steve. Got oh, the I end. got there in the end. I got there in the got end. I didn't, right want, at I, didn't the end. To, I didn't want to incur the wrath of Ken. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not, not as bad as the wrath of Khan, but you know, the wrath of Ken. It's a sound it's close thing. Like, close. It's like a knockoff Star Trek film. <laughs> right. Uh, we're going to go. Um, happy York today, everybody. This, this broadcast was sponsored by Yorkshire Tea. Yorkshire exactly. tea, it really was. <laughs> <laughs> Yorkshire, 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 Yorkshire. I think switch off now, quick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Have a good week, everyone. We'll Have a good week, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.